This is another story from my haunted house. This is about my youngest brother that I mentioned in part one. He's 10 years younger than me and has Asperger's syndrome. Everyone in my immediate family is 100% convinced that he's a medium. I think that's why our house is haunted, because I had a dream about that. I think they're drawn to him. Anyway, when he was maybe three or four, he was pretty developmentally delayed. He could speak, but he chose what he spoke about very carefully, and that was usually only his two special interests, Toy Story and the aliens that came to talk to him at night. There was a nursing home being converted into an antique mall in my hometown, and one afternoon, my mom went down there with my brother in tow to see about renting a space. The second they walked in the door, my almost nonverbal brother said, this place is haunted and was totally fascinated. He wasn't scared at all. He took off running through the halls while my mom spoke with the owner about rates. He eventually found his way back to my mom and would not stop tugging on her until she acknowledged him. When she spoke to him, he started telling her and the owner about all the ghosts that were there. He said that they were all old people and that they were really bored. He said one old man was quite weird. The owner actually verified this by saying multiple contractors had quit because they said it was haunted. Another example. My mom loves yard sales and would sometimes have estate sales for people for a profit. She had trouble finding a daycare that would accommodate my brother, so he was usually with her. She had an estate sale for a lady that was referred to her by an acquaintance. While preparing for the sale, she purchased a gorgeous bedroom set that ended up being my bedroom set. After their sale, she met with whom she thought was the homeowner to pick up the bedroom suite. They were standing in the bedroom chatting when the husbands were disassembling the furniture and my then seven-ish year old brother comes running in, saying that the sweet old lady in the kitchen gave him some cookies and that they were very delicious. My mom looked at the lady, who then burst into tears. She said that this was her mom's house and that her mom had recently passed. The neighborhood kids always called her the cookie lady and would often ring her doorbell in hopes of receiving a cookie, which she was always happy to provide such a sweet little quip. There are also darker stories from this house, but always nice to end on a bright note once in a while. Growing up, my family seemed to have a knack for picking haunted houses or haunted locations. Being a military kid was part of that. We got sent to old parts of the bases that we lived in all the time. One was the entire section of houses, which was haunted by what the wives and my mom deduced was some kind of civil war general. There was one base in particular that we lived on twice in my life. This was the second time when I had studied more of the paranormal, and it was really interesting. It was a young house, one of the newer ones, which had been built in the span between when we had moved from and back to the base. My old childhood home was long gone, but my mom still thinks the general makes his rounds. This house had something else. Both my mom and I have a knack for telling if a house is haunted. To us, it won't feel empty. A haunting, free house feels more like a vacuum of space. I always get the sense that something will peek around the wall at me when I look through the windows, if something's there. At the house we lived in, I would always get the sensation that something was standing behind me. Like in the horror movies, where you see the ghost behind the character, but then they stand up and it's gone. For fun, I called the ghost Johnny, as in Johnny Rebel, seeing as how it was Virginia and probably another Civil War ghost. One night, I was laying in bed, and I heard what sounded like pacing up in the attic area. It was frantic pacing, like someone was unhappy with something or panicked. The activity was ramping up a little, so my mom and I did a mini investigation. We opened up the attic door 
and my mom stuck her head up there. Immediately, she called down to my dad, asking if he had put the Christmas decorations up there. He did, and we both shared a knowing look. She took the decorations down, and the activity immediately settled down. When my dad was promoted, we were moved to a new house just a short walk from the old one. My mom came to me one day and said that she had had a dream. In her dream, it was the dining room from the previous house, and a little boy was sitting at the table, dressed in 18th century clothing. She said he looked up and had blood coming from his eyes and mouth. She started yelling at him to leave. She said that he looked startled and said, but I don't want to leave. We both agreed it was an odd dream, and as I thought about it, I looked up yellow fever, knowing that it was a sickness prominent during that time frame that the boy looked to be a part of. I didn't think it would turn up what I found. Not only had there been a yellow fever epidemic in that area in the 1800s, but there were two stages of the disease. If you got the second stage, you would bleed from the eyes and mouth. I told this to my mom, and we came to the conclusion that Johnny was probably not a Civil War soldier, but a little boy who died of a terrible disease and just wanted his space to be left alone. Despite my experience, I am still hesitant to use the word haunted. Many people have asked me what I think caused what happened, and I don't have an answer. I can describe it, but I cannot explain it. Therefore, I tend to avoid the usage of words and terms that attempt to explain the phenomenon in any manner. I'm a man of science. I'm not religious or spiritual. However, I cannot simply ignore what happened to me. Here's my story. It was 2009 to 2010. When I met the woman who would later become my wife, we started renting a small house within the city limits. I was in the process of beginning a new job, and circumstances prevented me from staying in the house with her for the first week. Each morning, we would talk on the phone during my drive to work. She explained to me that each morning, she had struggled to sleep the previous night. She described sounds that were keeping her awake, like someone running through the house, objects falling off the kitchen counter, doors slamming. After three days, I made arrangements to go ahead and move in with her. I was convinced that somebody was breaking in and harassing her. She was convinced, however, that she was sharing the house with a ghost. I took off work the third day. It took me about eight hours to get everything moved in. I was taking a break on our bed when I felt somebody or something tug on my pant leg. I remained motionless, hoping that it would happen again. After a few seconds, it did happen again, much more aggressively this time. I felt a hand firmly placed on my leg just before it grabbed my jeans and started pulling. She was on the bed next to me, and nobody else was with us. We had no pets, as they weren't allowed. I immediately started having the same experiences throughout the night, as she had described over the phone. It was like somebody was destroying our kitchen, but nothing was ever out of place. There was running, as she described, which sounded like a smaller person, perhaps a child. I woke up one night to somebody standing next to my bed. I heard giggling, and then the individual bolted out of the room as I turned my head. It was too dark to notice any features. Over the course of eight months, many unusual things happened. To make a long story short, I'll skip ahead to my last experience, and perhaps the most frightening. I was alone in the house, waiting to join an online seminar. I was sitting on my couch with my laptop on the coffee table ahead of me. I heard the back door slam shut and a person began running through the house. These footsteps were heavier and this person was moving quickly. 
Given the design of our small house, this person was running in my direction. I shot up and ran out of the house, and I didn't stop until I reached the street. And that's where I remained until my wife returned. As I was standing by the street, I was looking back into the house. A balloon from a recent party made its way from the kitchen into my bedroom, then back into the kitchen moments later. It felt like I was watching somebody search for me, going room to room, all while holding this balloon. This was the last thing that happened to us, and it stopped after that. We continued living there for another four years. I would give anything to experience it again. I would try to be less afraid, and I would approach the situation more analytically. My wife, on the other hand, was never afraid of it. Unfortunately, my wife passed away a few years ago, but I know she would have enjoyed sharing her story. I still drive by that house occasionally, and nobody has ever moved in. I've had paranormal stuff happening in my house for a few years now. I've always been able to see ghosts around and hear them. Recently, though, there have been more experiences. I've heard footsteps and I've seen shadow figures way more often recently. It's always when I'm alone in my home. I hear people shout my name even though nobody else is there. I've always believed in spirits and demons. Recently, I bought this doll. It was really old and it definitely had a sense of creepiness. We had purchased this doll from a boot sale in the street. It's where people park their cars and you shop out of the boot or the trunk. My stepdad and I have been the only ones to touch the doll. We both touched the doll on Tuesday this week when we were setting it up. I put it on the drawers at the end of my bed and I fell asleep. At 2.58 in the morning, I woke up feeling ill and I felt like I was being watched. I put the doll in one of the drawers as I didn't like the sense that it was giving me. My stepdad and I woke up the next day with horrible symptoms. We ended up with a non-viral bacterial tonsillitis infection. I spent the whole of Thursday in bed violently shaking from this illness. That night, my fan flew off the bedside table. It had been there for weeks and I didn't move, so there was no reason for it to move. I don't know if this is all just a big coincidence or not. I don't know if we have a haunted house, a haunted doll, or nothing. But it's definitely been weird. Hoth is a little village near Canterbury and Sturry, out on the old marshes that were once the Wantsum Channel. A few years ago in 2014, my landscaping company were called to a job in a beautiful house there. The house was a converted barn and had been bought by the new owners, who wanted some work to be done there before moving in, as is often the case. So the first step was to visit the property and take a look to come up with a price for the job. There was a great deal of land surrounding the property, with extensive gardens that had fallen into a state of disrepair. After visiting the property, I returned, saying that the place gave me the creeps, and that although it was empty and isolated several hundred yards from the next dwelling, it felt like I was being watched. Obviously, everybody laughed at me. I priced the job, which was a big one, and would need us to be on site for about five days, and forgot about the whole thing. As it turned out, we were given the contract for the garden clearance and various tree works, and we booked in for a few weeks' time. When we arrived on site, there was a crew of builders there already, who were working inside the house, and had been living there for a couple of weeks while they carried out the renovations. When we arrived, we said our hellos, and John asked what they thought of the house. The reply was, It's a lovely place, but it's haunted as hell. We laughed and asked why they thought that, 
and they told us that all night they could hear banging coming from empty rooms. Their tools were being moved around. They heard whispering, and one had even received a phone call from a distant voice that he couldn't understand, from a number that was just all zeros. He showed us the call record to prove it on his mobile phone. Interested, but still not entirely convinced, we got on with our work. Joe told us that the back courtyard garden gave him the willies, but apart from that, day one was uneventful. On day two, it was quiet in the morning. Then in the afternoon, I went inside for coffee. While I was there, there were knocking sounds coming from one of the back rooms. Nobody was in there, but it could well have been someone in one of the garden areas knocking against the wooden walls from outside while doing some kind of job. But then there was a sound like wallpaper being unrolled or a poster falling off of a wall, something like that. It came from the hall. Then out of the hall, a shadow shot through the kitchen and out the front door. I was alone in the house at the time, and after looking from every angle, the only way the shadow could have been cast was by the kitchen lights in the middle of the room, but there was nothing there to cast it. I was starting to become a believer. On day three, Paul, one of the builders, was having an argument with somebody on the phone. When he hung up, he said, I can't believe that. The driver from the skip company says he won't come here to pick up the skip unless we can promise that there's somebody on site to meet him because he reckons that he saw something here when he dropped the skip off before we got here and he says that it's definitely haunted. When he did arrive, he said that when he dropped the skip off the first time, he knew the place was empty, but he saw somebody moving around in there. And while he was unloading the skip, the radio in his lorry came on with a loud load of static. Day four was quiet, apart from the knocking and banging, which we'd all gotten used to by then, even though it was louder than before, and definitely not one of us messing about. On day five, a guy turned up to put in a new TV aerial, and that involved some wiring being fitted in the back room where most of the noises had come from. A few hours in, he was having coffee with everyone else in the kitchen, and he said that he'd be glad when he was done, because that room was creeping him out. He said that he was sure he kept hearing somebody walking around in there, but there was nobody inside the house, let alone in that room. The final thing that happened while we were working there was that another contractor turned up to do some light fittings. He parked outside the house. While he was in there, his van radio came on blaring with really loud static, just like the skip driver had said happened to him when he was there before. A few weeks after we'd been there, the new owners had moved in, and John and I went over to visit them and settle up the bill. John was curious and asked the owner if he was enjoying living there. He obviously read between the lines a little bit. Maybe he'd already been asked about the place by one of the other contractors. And he responded by saying, it's a beautiful house, but I must say, it takes on a completely different feeling at night. It's not such a nice place after it gets dark. We returned to work there a couple more times on smaller jobs. But as the clients were living there full time by then, we didn't spend much time in the actual house itself. On one occasion, we were in the kitchen in the evening, having a cup of tea with the owner, when from the back room, there was a huge crash, like a wardrobe being pushed over. The owner just put his finger up and whispered, please just pretend you didn't hear that. We don't want the children to be scared. We do a lot of work on repossessed houses, no pun intended, and houses going through probate. So I've visited a lot of empty properties, often where the owner has recently died. And in over 10 years, I have never been creeped out by a place like I was that one. For a couple of days, I have been hearing footsteps in the middle of the night, loud enough to wake me up. When I wake up, they suddenly disappear. This could be an auditory hallucination, but I'm damn sure I heard it. Spots in my house also suddenly turn cold when I'm home alone, like the kitchen. 
Also, my television has occasionally been flickering on and off for a couple of days. My two dogs also keep barking at random spots in my house, and they seem agitated a lot. I can't get them to stop, even if I offer them treats. There's also just a terribly weird feeling in my own house. I don't have any audio or video evidence. If I get some, I'll let you know. But it's so freaking scary. I can't live in my own home without fear anymore. I'm usually skeptical when it comes to spirits and demons, but this has really got me convinced that something very odd is going on. There's no past history of paranormal activity in my house. No one's messed around with a Ouija board. I'm just so scared. I can't sleep or go places in my house without turning the lights on. If you have any idea what's going on, please let me know. So this was when I was about 16. My family and I moved into a registered historic home that was 240 years old. It was dated around when our town was founded. When you first walked into the house, you felt it. It was like an ominous cloud that hung over everything. The first experience I ever had was in the parlor that used to hold wakes in it. I was sitting at the computer, we had converted it into an office, and I kept hearing loud noises directly above me. The room above me was my bedroom, and I was the only one home. I looked around to make sure the dogs were with me and that they weren't tearing anything apart. I initially ignored it and it subsided. After about an hour, it started up again, but with more violence. It sounded like somebody had moved my entire wardrobe across the bedroom floor. I ran up the staircase, but by the time I got to the second landing, the sound stopped. I barged into my room and it was completely silent. No furniture had been moved. The second event was a lot more terrifying. It was about 3 a.m. I woke up to the sound of grown men arguing outside of my bedroom door. The catch? The only male that lived with us was my 14-year-old brother. I jumped out of my bed and flung the door open, trying to catch it. Nothing. I got back in bed after I stupidly locked the door as if that was going to stop anything, and it started again. This time I went to my grandmother's and brother's separate rooms. They were both asleep, and every TV was off. The toilet down the hall flushed itself, and I ran back to my room. The third event is when we decided to move. My brother was taking a shower upstairs. While he showered, a clear, perfect imprint of another set of feet appeared in front of him. Small things had happened in between those events, but these really stood out the most. I'm so glad we don't live there anymore. When I was pregnant, my kid's father and I stayed at his cousin's house for about a month before we moved into our apartment. It's an old farmhouse in a newly developed area of Warwick, Rhode Island. There are farms and woods in one direction and a small town in the other. We were told when we moved in that the house had been built in the 1840s, which to me was super interesting until my kid's father, I'll call him Brian, remarked at how the stairs seemed awfully dark and creepy for the middle of the day, and when I looked, he was right. It gave off such a sinister vibe. We slept in the living room, and at night we could see through the kitchen, and it was as if the stairs became this dark, uncomfortable void. When we brought this up to Brian's cousin and his wife, they proceeded to laugh and tell us stories of people being pushed down the stairs. I don't think they really believed in ghosts, and the husband was an abusive drunk and drug addict, so they had enough problems. That house was chaotic. The husband and wife clearly had serious issues, emotionally and financially. They had a six-year-old son who was afraid to sleep upstairs by himself because of the shadows. Great. 
After being in the house alone a couple of times and seeing genuine human figures out of the corner of my eye, or even better, black dots on the floor with what looked like long, spindly legs running, I was a little on edge. Every time you would look at these things, they would disappear. A few times, I would see a figure out of the corner of my eye, and I would look and see one of the family members who I hadn't heard come in. I think that freaked me out the most, because how can you explain to yourself seeing a person, and sometimes nothing being there, but other times you expect it to disappear, and it would, in fact, be a person? It was so weird and unsettling. Brian would say how sitting in one chair in the living room, you would want to look over your shoulder into the doorway, as if someone was coming down a set of stairs that used to be there. This also freaked me out, considering that I slept right near the doorway and would often get a feeling of someone coming toward me. One day, Brian and I were the only two in the entire house. Facing one another about two feet away, face to face, we were talking as we usually do. Directly in the middle of us, we heard a woman's voice say, Shh. I asked if he had said that, and he stared at me with huge eyes and said, No. Did you? Then we laughed it off, as we were clearly talking too loud for the inhabitants, apparently. We eventually brought this up to the family, who included a second cousin living upstairs, and they confirmed that they too saw and felt things. They told us they assumed that the black voids that ran on the floor were just one of their dogs and ignored it if it wasn't. The cousin who lived upstairs said that the curtains to his closet often moved, like they were being pushed by a breeze or something. He chalked it up to being stoned or tired. There was no breeze. The wife told me that when they first moved in there, her son would see a man in a hat, but assumed that it was just his imagination. How could you live in a house so clearly haunted and just pass it off? The front of the house at night was avoided by basically everybody, as it was right where it felt like somebody was walking by that door frame at you in the living room. One night, I didn't feel like walking all the way around this huge house to the car, so I walked as fast as I could to the car through the front door. I heard a deep growling coming from the side of the house, they owned three dogs, one of which was a bull mastiff. Too freaked out to call for her, I ran in, and to my horror, all three dogs were inside the house. Needless to say, I didn't use that entrance again. It was such an emotionally depressing house, and maybe me being pregnant, I was just more aware of everything, I don't really know. There were other weird things, but one of the last conversations that I had with one of the roommates was really interesting. The roommate was renting a back bedroom. It was down a long hall at the very end, the only door in this isolated hallway. I told her about Brian and I hearing the shh directly in the middle of us. She explained that she hears the same exact thing in the hallway. If she and her son were getting too loud, they would hear a woman say shh. They were sure that it was the owner's young son sneaking into the hallway, but I'm not so sure. I'm pretty sure that the house I babysit at is haunted. The parents were going to a party, and they were supposed to be home at around 9, but rang me saying that they wouldn't be back until midnight, so it was my job to put the kids to bed, which I had no problem with. They are the sweetest, most well-behaved kids I've ever met. It got to 9.30, and the kids brushed their teeth, got their books, and went to bed. I tidied up, sat down, did a little homework, and then FaceTimed with my friend. This is a religious family, and there are crosses on some of their walls. I heard what sounded like someone knocking on the front door, but it was about 10.15, and the parents usually message me when they're almost home. And, of course, they have keys, so I automatically suspected that it wasn't them. I checked, but there was nobody at the door, so I just sat back down on the couch and got carried away talking to my friend again. Then, the same three knocks. 
They have guinea pigs, and I started to suspect that it was those guys nibbling on the cage or just messing around, so I went and checked. But they were in their little home things. I still believed it was them, but then, as I was leaving the room, I saw the wooden cross that was nailed at its head on the wall lift from the bottom and drop three times, knocking three times. It was as though some force was lifting the bottom half that wasn't nailed and dropping it like a door knocker. I just froze, and my friend was like, oh, what, what, what was that? I tiptoe ran back into the living room. I have no idea what caused that. I started to think maybe it was one of the kids jumping from upstairs, causing the walls to shake or something. But the cross is on the wall between the kitchen and the dining room, and directly above was the parents' room and the bathroom. So unless they were in their parents' room or the bathroom jumping up and down in sets of threes, it doesn't really make sense. Plus, they were asleep. Perhaps coincidentally, the homework that I was doing was philosophy, which can be very anti-religion and sometimes anti-God. In fact, I was actually writing an answer to the question, is the Western idea of God illogical? Probably not the most respectful homework to do in the house of religious people, but hey. I don't know what it was. A mocking? God showing me he was real? Maybe not. I can't explain it to this day. When I was a kid, I would always feel watched from a very young age, around six or seven. I would refuse to sleep alone for this reason, and I insisted on sleeping with my brother or mum. If I was forced to sleep alone, which was the case most of the time, I would stare into my room and observe the details for hours before finally falling asleep. My first experience came when I was around eight. I went to bed like I would on a normal night. My mom would pretend to sleep next to me and keep me company so that I would fall asleep. When she didn't do this, I would place a large body pillow next to me so that I wouldn't feel watched. I woke up in the middle of the night one night. I would always wake up at around two. But on this night, next to my bed was an old woman that I could see through. I could see all the details, though. She had wrinkles, probably around 80 years old. She had curly hair and wore a buttoned sweater with stripes. I screamed at the top of my lungs and ran out the door, next to her. My dad picked me up and let me sleep in their bedroom. It would only escalate from here. Almost every night from this point on, I would see a cloud shaped like a human standing next to my door when I woke up in the middle of the night. Keep in mind, I would always wake up at around 2 a.m., with no exceptions. It would disappear after 30 or 60 seconds, and kind of just dissolve and float up into the roof. I could move and speak, so it was not sleep paralysis. One night, it spoke with me in a woman's voice. I was sleeping when I woke up to the voice saying, Hi. I thought it was my mom, so I hesitated to even open my eyes at first. But then, I was greeted by the figure standing at the door once more. I tried saying a few words, but no response. If I had to guess, I saw this figure at my door every night for months, maybe years. The vibes I got every time I went face to face with it were terrible. I was absolutely horrified. It's hard to explain, but it felt like the thing in front of me was evil. If I remember correctly, it was not 100% stationary. The mass or body of the thing was moving slightly, sort of hovering in position, if that makes sense. My brother reported a female voice whispering, good night, in his ear one night as well, which is super scary. At this stage, sometimes things would fall down in my room at night, and my parents would come search it but find nothing. My brothers, one remains skeptical till this day, started reporting heavy footsteps when they brushed their teeth at night. They would go and check, find nothing, go back to brushing their teeth, then hear the footsteps and repeat. Hearing heavy breathing right next to me at night also happened a few times, stopping when I turned on the lights. One night, where my brother and I were relaxing in the living room, we spotted a figure walking back and forth 
right outside our window, maybe five meters away on the grass. It was a summer night, so it was fairly bright. It was shaped like the person I always saw, but this figure was black and not the cloudy type that I would always spot. It walked back and forth for minutes. We called our dad over, but he couldn't see it. Only my brother and I could. One particular incident made me call it quits and beg for help. I was sick and home from school. My mom was going to the bakery, so I would be home alone for a little while, which I hated. I went to my brother's room and started playing some Counter-Strike. After a few minutes, a large sculpture that my brother had made at school fell down onto my face. I got scared, opened the door, and across the hallway I saw the cloud figure at my own room, exactly the same spot I saw it every night. This time, it moved quickly toward the kitchen, at a pretty fast pace. I jumped out the window and waited for my mom to come home outside. I had never been that afraid. I get chills just remembering it. At this point, I couldn't take it anymore, and I begged for my parents to find someone that could help. My parents, who had witnessed nothing alarming, didn't share the same desire, but agreed to do it. I could not be present when he was here. I was, quote, too young. But he claimed that three entities lived in the house and gave us some details as to why they were present. From that point on, I never experienced it again. I wouldn't feel watched anymore. I could sleep alone, and I never saw anything again. I don't know what the hell that was, but I'm getting curious now, now that some years have passed. So, if anyone has any ideas as to where these things come from or what I experienced beyond what I've told you and what I know, I would be anxious to hear it. Shortly before becoming pregnant with my second child in 2008, we moved into a 100-year-old mansion that had been renovated into separate apartments. I had never had any sort of paranormal experience before living here, so most of what I experienced I brushed off or made excuses for, but some things were really hard to ignore. I would frequently see shadows or movements out of the corner of my eye hear whispers that very distinctly sounded like they were coming from inside my apartment and would often have lights turn on and off by themselves. One night in the middle of summer, I was about seven months pregnant at the time, I was struggling to get comfortable in bed, but finally settled on my back with my hands above my head. No sooner had I started to relax that I felt a cold hand on my stomach. It took me a moment to realize that the hand was coming from the wrong direction. It was as if somebody standing beside my bed had their hand on my stomach. I immediately sat up and looked around, but there was no one there other than my ex who was facing the opposite direction. I told him what happened, and he told me it was probably just the baby kicking and I was mistaken. What I felt was definitely not that. Shortly after this, I started to see a yellow flowing dress with small flowers. I don't really know how to explain it. It was like I constantly would see the tail end of someone walking into a room or down the hall. I never got to see the whole person wearing it, just the back of the flowing dress. Every time I saw it, I didn't feel scared, but peaceful. After the birth of my second child, we moved into a bigger apartment across the hall in the same house. I immediately noticed the atmosphere felt different, like the air felt almost heavy. The second night there, I could hear voices on the baby monitor, thinking maybe it was picking up voices from the apartment above ours, and being the nosy person I am, I laid there with my eyes closed and the monitor pressed to my ear, listening hard, trying to pick up what was being said. Suddenly, I could hear a door in my son's room slowly creak open through the monitor. I stopped breathing, trying to listen closely, thinking I was going to hear my son's tiny voice or small footsteps. Instead, it sounded like somebody with heavy, steel-toed boots on was running down my hallway, into my room, 
and then they launched themselves onto the bottom of our bed. The whole bed shook. I felt paralyzed. My ex started screaming, thinking that we had an intruder, but there was no one there. We tried to rationalize what had happened. Maybe a spring got caught in the mattress during the move and happened to release at that exact moment. And maybe the footsteps I heard were actually from upstairs. All I know is that from that point on, I was absolutely terrified to stay in the apartment at night without a lot of lights on. There was also a weird room or storage area attached to my son's room that gave me the absolute creeps and I could never get the door to stay closed. I put a hook and eye lock at the top of the door and almost every day I would go in and the lock would be off and the door would be open. We never used that room and my son was only three at the time. Finding the door open always gave me anxiety, like that feeling you get right before something bad happens, which is such a weird thing to say about a random empty room, but it's true. Not one second from the time I moved into that apartment until I moved out a few months later, did I ever feel comfortable. I always felt like I was being watched. After moving out, I met multiple people that lived in that house and every single one talked about all the weird and unexplainable things that happened while they lived there. This is the only place that I have ever lived that I've had weird, creepy, or otherwise unexplainable experiences. But that was the house that made me a believer. Let me start by saying that this has been going on for over a year now. Some days are really bad. Some days, absolutely nothing happens. I live in a rural area. I have lived in this house since my son was two years old, until he'll be 16 in May. Nothing at all happened or felt weird up until about three years ago. I was sitting on my patio in the summer. All of a sudden, I got the feeling that somebody was watching me. My son wasn't home at the time, and I was alone. My house is surrounded by wooded areas. My actual driveway is almost a half mile long from street to house. I looked towards the woods at the back of my house, and I saw a man standing in front of a tree. He was older. I'd say he looked to be in his 70s. He was wearing a dark suit. The color was faded black. He did absolutely nothing but stand there, staring. He was bald, and the left side of his head looked like a deflated basketball, for lack of a better description. He made me nervous, and I went back inside my house. Fast forward to the present. My son and I have seen this many, many times. He never leaves the woods, doesn't speak, and doesn't try to do anything. We've become used to him. We respect his area, and he respects ours. About three months ago, in early October, I was walking my dog in our yard. She started barking and took off running into the woods. I yelled for her to stop and caught up to her about 400 feet in. I grabbed her leash. Before I could turn to head back home, she started growling. My dog loves people, wouldn't hurt a fly, but her growl was vicious. I finally turned around, and there was a man standing there approximately four feet away. I never heard him or saw him approach. There's no reason for him to be in the woods behind my house. My closest neighbor is a mile down the road. He was also dressed in a suit, a navy blue one, blonde hair, roughly mid-thirties. He caught me off guard and I said, oh, <laughs> you scared me. He replied, beautiful day out today. I said, yes, yes it is and I began moving to walk around him. I got beside him and had the most awful case of nausea to the point that my mouth filled with saliva and I thought I was going to vomit. I kept walking with my dog. I didn't want him to follow me to my house because my son was in there alone. So I walked along the wooded edge all the way to the top of my driveway. I looked back several times and didn't see him. After a few minutes, I began going back down my driveway to my home. My son called me and said, I thought you were in the backyard. 
I said, no. I walked up to the road and we're heading back now. He said, mom, a man came to the door and said to tell you that it's very rude to walk away during a conversation. Since that day, things have happened at least three times a week. I found a tooth laying on my kitchen floor. I found a small pendant cross on my windowsill. I've had bruises on my arm that look like fingerprints. My dog died from metastasized sarcoma on what we thought was just a sprained shoulder. The same day my dog passed, my son and I both saw this man again. Well, we saw his face, but his body was grayish white. His arms were unusually long, and his legs were just as long. He was crouched down in a position, like a spider. My son is terrified and wants to move. I'd be on board with the idea as well if it weren't for the fact that this man or thing followed me to a friend's house one day, and she saw him too. So I don't think moving is going to do any good. My uncle's house was constructed from zero, but the place where it is had been long abandoned before he started building. I have so many stories from there that, to me, prove that it is indeed haunted. But I'll begin with the oldest one I can remember, before there was even a house there. Right next to the house, there's a kindergarten. I studied there when I was a kid, just like my mom and her brothers before me. There was always a playground legend about a man in a military uniform who called the kids to go behind the school, and then they disappeared. Even as a kid, I remember being so afraid of going to that particular place behind the school. But as I grew, I stopped thinking about it. Fast forward a few years, and my uncle's house had just been finished. One night, when I was out doing laundry with my cousin, I decided that I wanted to see the kindergarten from above, as it had been years since I saw it on the inside. So we go into the balcony and get a really good view of the place. And after a few seconds, I noticed somebody walking in between the classrooms and the back of the school. I couldn't see their face, but my whole body tensed as I saw this shadow go through the wall and then disappear behind the school. I remembered the story from my childhood, and I still wonder if that's the same man that the kids saw back then. Most of the paranormal experiences I've had have been with my cousin. I believe her when it comes to the paranormal things that she's told me has happened in my uncle's house. One of the scariest ones for her was a time when she had just come home from school and wanted to ask her aunt, let's call her Sarah, if they were going to eat at her grandparents' house or if they would be staying there. So she goes to the bottom of the stairs and yells, Aunt Sarah, are you here? To which Sarah's voice responded, Yes. Then my cousin yelled again, are we going to go to grandma's? But no one answered after that. After a few minutes without a response, my cousin went to the second floor and started looking for Sarah, but there was absolutely no one there, not a single person. She then called her on the phone, only to find out that they had all gone to her grandparents' house and were waiting for her to go as well. She ran out of there and didn't come back for weeks as she was too afraid of the voice she had heard. I wasn't present when this happened, but it's important to the next story where I was present. After those things and a bunch of other paranormal things happened to her and our family, they decided that they would call in a priest to bless the house and invited everybody to pray and later hang out with them. My whole family was there, 20 plus people in the backyard as the priest blessed the house. We were all praying and singing, happy, united, when suddenly, just as the priest was going to climb the stairs to the second floor, a loud voice sounded as if it was coming from where we were standing. It just said, go away. My 14 year old self was shaking with fear, but the lady that was directing the prayer yelled at us to pray louder and to take each other's hands. A lot of people were crying with horror at what we had just witnessed. That has to be one of the scariest things I've ever been through. And for that, I'm convinced that there's something horrible hiding in my uncle's house.
I've had a few interesting experiences since I started using my spare room three months ago. A little backstory about the spare room. When I first bought my home last year, there was a family of around 13 people living in it, six of which were adults. There were three small bedrooms and one sketchy annex in the garage. A year later and the neighborhood is still telling me stories about how awful these people were as neighbors. The annex room was initially shoddy framing and drywall work, presumably installed by that family. The walls were painted a weird green color, and the rug was a wrinkly stained mess. It became apparent that someone had been peeing in all four corners of the room. I figured it might just be pets, but there was a mirror that had, please help me, written on it in makeup, and the room locked from the outside. The day we got our keys, I called to respond to the Seattle riots with my National Guard unit, and I was gone for about a month. During that time, my wife and the in-laws began renovating the home to make it livable. I felt guilty being unable to help. My wife got together with my mom to convert that scary extra room into a man cave and jam room with all my musical equipment and memorabilia. It came out really nice, but I haven't found much time to use it in the past year. A couple of months ago, I built a gaming PC and decided to set it up in that room. Now that I've been going in there almost daily, things have started to feel a little strange around the house. I get the sensation that someone is standing directly behind me once or twice a day in the room. Our TV caught fire in the living room a few weeks ago. Our water main burst last weekend, causing us to dig our yard up over the course of three days. And my garage light keeps turning on and off. I can hear the light switch moving. This morning, I got out of the shower to find that my wife had already left for work. I'm coming down the hall and I hear her clearly say, Hey babe, from the spare room side of the house. I replied, You're still here? To which I got silence. I looked out the front window, and sure enough, her truck was gone. That's when I heard her again. Babe, come here. I grabbed my things and noped to work. Anyway, when I was pulling out of the driveway, I could hear what sounded like a girl screaming from outside, followed by a bang. I stopped before backing into the street, thinking, was that my phone? I waited for a second before continuing on my way, thinking it might just be the school across the street. I got about 50 feet down the road before I heard it again. This time it was faint, but it sounded like it was coming from inside the car. I paused at the stop sign and rolled down the windows to see if it would happen again, as it had sounded identical to the first one. Nothing. I roll up my windows and continue on my way to find that it happened several more times, almost like a recording. The same scream and the same bang, over and over, for another mile or so. Anyway, I'm weirded out for the day. I might sage and bang some pans later. I don't know. Update. So this could all be a coincidence, but we've had a string of bad luck events take place with the recent snow. The following events happened over the course of a week, starting on Christmas Eve. We had a crazy cold snap here in Whatcom County, bringing us to unheard of low temps for the area. As one could expect, our hot water line froze and separated, leaving us without hot water for almost the entire week. Why is it always water problems lately? I ended up spending a bunch of time in the attic installing new copper lines and stuff started going off around the home. With everything beginning from me using the spare room office more often, I'm not surprised that I might have once again disturbed the privacy of whatever entity is in our place. My wife keeps telling me that she's under the impression I've opened and closed the bathroom door when I hadn't been back there all day. This has happened pretty often since I originally told the story about this room. Maybe it's paranoia. The other night we woke up to a really loud sound from the spare room area. Our entire pantry rack system had come off the wall and was barely held up by one of the accordion doors. 
this could be explained by too much weight on the shelves. Maybe. But what happened next made it odd. I got up early the same morning and booted my PC to play some Tarkov. I was in there from around 7 to 10 a.m. When I came out, I noticed that the closet next to our front door was wide open and all the coats inside were on the ground. After a closer look, I realized the plastic hangers were all broken off, like somebody had just ripped everything down. The cold cracked our truck windshield. We've been experiencing some relationship struggles that I don't even care to elaborate on. We had no hot water, couldn't work all that week because of inclement weather, and now this? It's just a lot of stuff in such a short period. Anyway, I don't know what you guys think this might be, but I thought you might enjoy the story. Back in 2009, me, my mom, and my stepdad moved into a really old, rustic rural cottage in England. My father had passed away not too long before, and this was going to be a new start for us all. The house was an absolute bargain. It had six bedrooms, two very spacious living rooms, and a huge annex at the back that was essentially a second house. We couldn't work out why it was so cheap. We went for the viewing, and the family eventually told us that their elderly mother had passed away there peacefully in the annex and they just needed to get away from the feeling of her. That probably should have been a first red flag. We weren't put off though, and we bought the house. From the beginning, it was unsettling. My parents didn't see it at first, but I was incredibly uncomfortable there. It was extremely unnerving and cold. Not to mention, it was isolated behind rows of trees and a very long driveway, so far away from anyone else. It started on the first night. My room was at the end of the corridor, and if you came out of my room, on the right was a bathroom and a locked door that led to the annex, the place where the elderly mother had died. My parents slept a long way down the corridor, in the last bedrooms, so I was quite isolated, and directly opposite my room were the stairs. This first night, it was freakishly cold. I pulled my blankets up to my head, but after my dad passed away, I had suffered from insomnia for years, so the cold and the anxieties of moving to a new house all added together to create zero sleep. So I ended up laying awake for hours, just sort of staring around the room. My bedroom door was one of those old and mismatched wooden country house doors. It didn't quite reach the carpets, and after a few hours, I could hear the creaking of floorboards directly outside my room and shadows that seemed even darker than the darkness of the hallway walking past my door. I presumed that one of my parents had gotten up to use the bathroom, at first. But this went on, back and forth, back and forth, for several minutes. And it was fast. It was a very brisk walk. Not to mention, next to my door was the locked door to the annex. Anybody walking at that speed would have hit the door, but nothing. It freaked me out and had me dreading the next night. This kept happening, every night for a few weeks, and I remember vividly one night I actually left my bedroom door open. Around the same time, as always, I heard the creaking. I turned around, and unmistakably, there was a figure, blacker than black, walking forward and backwards in front of the door, just visible in the darkness of the hallway. I couldn't take my eyes off it the entire time it was there. It's safe to say I never slept with the door open again after that night. But this is where things start to get properly creepy. I'd been terrified of this shadow for weeks now. There was a really horrible feeling that I had around it, like it was after me. And one night, as I was going downstairs for dinner, I had the same cold feeling. And for just a second, I froze in place in the dark hallway and looked to my right toward the annex door. And there, 
Sure as anything, and without my sleepy eyes to blame it on, I saw the same black shadow walking directly at me at high speed. I ran downstairs as quickly as I could, and I told my parents everything. They mostly laughed it off and didn't believe me, and tried to reassure me that ghosts aren't real, and there was no chance of anything about this old lady still being in the house. Now, a bit of backstory. This old lady was terrified of the previous owner's family dog, so much so that they had installed a pulley system in the house so she could pull a cord from her bedroom that would trigger an old bell to ring in the kitchen if she wanted anything. The whole system was still there when we moved in. And this night, the night after I told my parents, I was woken at around 2.30 in the morning by this bell in the kitchen ringing loudly and repetitively like it was being pulled firmly and constantly over and over. I ran out into the corridor, and my parents were there too, equally as confused and concerned as I was. We all looked at each other with ever-increasingly worried expressions, and ran downstairs into the kitchen to see what was going on. As soon as we entered the kitchen, it stopped. We ventured up into the annex to see what could have caused this. But nothing. No sign of anyone. And my gosh, I hated it there. It was even colder and more lifeless than the main part of the house, and I just felt like I needed to leave as soon as I could. My parents didn't quite believe that this was a ghost yet, but they were clearly less skeptical than before. From here, any activity became much more obvious. All of us, my parents included, started to hear knocking from the annex door next to my bedroom. Noises from downstairs that sounded like someone was down there moving. Sometimes my fish tank light would flick on and off with an audible click and wake me up. And I would often even wake up to my wardrobe doors being wide open with no breeze in sight. One night, I was sat reading alone in my room, and one of these wardrobe doors opened by itself, wide and with relative force. I got up, cautiously, and closed it and then I ran downstairs to see my parents. When I came up around 15 minutes later, every single cupboard door, around a dozen of them, were open as wide as they could go. Lots more went on too. Taps turning themselves on became a particularly regular occurrence, and one night I awoke to the sound of my cupboard door opening again and saw droplets of water running from the bathroom next to the annex door all the way to a few feet from my bed, with no droplets out again. I was terrified. It was around six months after all this had started that we eventually moved out. My grandma had begun to grow unwell and couldn't care for herself anymore, and she moved in with us. From the beginning, she hated that house. My grandma was so incredibly sweet and calm, and I've never seen her distressed like she was there. On one night in particular, when I was sat downstairs in the kitchen with her, she took my hand, pointed directly toward the annex, and said, Don't you go in there. I don't like it in there. It's safe to say this scared the crap out of me. On the last night we all spent together in the house, I was awoken by my mum screaming. Clear as day, she said she felt two hands firmly grab her ankles over the bedsheets and pull her down the bed, just a few inches, and right there and then she asked to leave. We went to stay in our old house for a while, but because of size, my stepdad, the biggest skeptic among us, stayed in Lilac Cottage for a few more months. He's still quiet to this day about that house. He hates talking about it, but even he admits that there was something incredibly wrong there. And without much warning, he put the house up for sale selling it so desperately that he lost almost a quarter of the price he paid for it, and he's never told us why. I've promised myself that one day I'll reach out to the current owners of that house and see if they have also experienced anything, but I haven't, at least not yet. I had a creepy experience at the Lizzie Borden house, and I thought I'd share. 
For the record, I don't believe in ghosts, and I'm skeptical of all paranormal experiences. But I will certainly admit when something is creepy and can't be easily explained. I didn't go into this day expecting or hoping to have any kind of experience. We stayed in one of the attic rooms, the Knowlton room, which had a large toy chest in the corner. I had no issue with the room and found it cute and comfortable. But when I went to sleep, I had awful dreams all night. It was a hyper-realistic dream. I was lying in the very same bed that I was actually sleeping in, feeling terrified. I was trying to fall back to sleep, but it was difficult because of the strong sense of fear and because I was so thirsty. My throat felt like paper. I wanted to get up and get a drink of water from the bathroom, but I was too afraid. I felt that if I opened my eyes, I would see somebody in the room. I lay there for what felt like hours trying to fall back to sleep so that morning would come. At one point, I heard what sounded like a ball go bouncing across the floor. I heard it a second time, and I woke up my friend who was sleeping next to me to ask if she had heard it, but she hadn't and it didn't happen again. I assumed that I dreamed this whole part because she doesn't remember me waking her up, but maybe she was just too tired to. Then at some point, I think I woke up for real because I was suddenly aware that I was lying in bed with my eyes open and the fear was suddenly lifted and the room felt completely normal. It was like a cloud had been lifted from my mind, which I sometimes feel when I'm struggling to wake up and I finally pull out of it. I was still really thirsty though. I didn't think much of my bad dream until the tour guide started to mention experiences that other guests had had while sleeping in the house. When we went to the attic, the guide told us that a lot of people who sleep there hear the sound of children playing at night. I asked if anyone had ever reported hearing a ball bounce across the floor. She said, that's pretty common. Why do you ask? She also refused to go into the attic guest rooms. She let us explore, but despite having no issue with the murder room and the master bedroom, she would not go into Knowlton room. This could have just been an act to enhance the tour's spookiness, but I don't know. I've also since learned that bad nightmares are very common in that room. For the record, I don't typically have dreams like this. I have no problem sleeping in strange places. I have stayed at many hotels and inns and friends' houses. And while I may have restless dreams, I don't have nightmares, especially not these vividly realistic ones where I'm just lying in bed feeling afraid. I've only had a dream like this once before, shortly after I had moved into my current apartment and was sleeping alone in my new room. No one ever lived in that part of the attic. It was open storage space and was only converted into guest rooms when the house became a bed and breakfast. So there's no reason for why there would be children's ghosts in the attic, let alone any ghosts at all. I know the tour guides claim that the attic is the most haunted part of the house, but there isn't really a logical reason for this. There were some children who were killed next door and they claim that those children come to visit, but I don't know. Maybe the atmosphere cultivates bad dreams. I did look at the toy chest before going to bed, so maybe that influenced my dream, but I didn't notice any balls in it, just dolls and stuffed animals. I know a bad dream isn't the most interesting thing, but the fact that many people have had bad dreams in this room is at least a little weird. It's the spookiest thing that I've ever experienced, for sure. I was hoping I might get another independent report of hearing a ball bouncing. I am too skeptical to believe anyone who says, me too, after hearing my story. But nonetheless, I find it neat that I dreamed of a ball bouncing. Despite only noticing dolls and not balls, and not being a person who's overly susceptible to creepy places, and that this fits with other people's reports of having heard children playing. What do you think? Have you ever had any strange experiences at the Lizzie Borden house? Okay, so this is weird. I was a skeptic for most of my life until I was around 23. A group of friends had stayed in an old house in southern Louisiana that was said to be haunted. The house was very old and there was a family cemetery in the backyard. 
The room that was said to have the most activity was the uppermost room. The maids of the house were so spooked by that particular room that they refused to clean it, leaving the owner to tend to it. I really didn't believe in things like spirits or ghosts, so I didn't mind sleeping there. Well, things got weird, quickly. The first day, the only things that were off were the lights, flickering slightly, only in the upstairs room, and the alarm clock constantly having to be reset as it kept going back to noon, as if it kept getting turned off. We chalked that up to the house being built in the 1910s and having dodgy wiring. We went to sleep and slept well. The next day, we decided to check out the family cemetery, just a small plot of land with maybe five or six graves. We walked around a bit and that was that. Well, that night, I began to have the most realistic and haunting dreams I've ever had in my life. They were vivid, sexual, dark, and above all, terrifying. When I woke up, I kept passing out, as though something was blocking my airway. I'd lose, then regain consciousness, all while trying to get out of that room. There was a voice in my head telling me to get out, and that whatever was on me couldn't get me outside the room. I crawled on my hands and knees, while trying to stay conscious, to the front door and down the stairs. About a third of the way down the staircase, I felt this relief, a massive weight removed that had been squeezing my entire ribcage. I could think clearly, without interference. I stayed on the couch the rest of the trip. The next day, when I went to move my things out of the room, I would begin to get dizzy if I stayed there for too long. When I'd go back downstairs, the dizziness would leave. I'm 32 years old, and this hasn't happened anywhere else since. When I was little, we used to live in a house where so many weird things happened. I know so many people probably won't believe me, but honestly, I saw so many things in that home. My dolls would move and talk to me at night. My brother was in the shower when all the tiles flew off the wall. I would see animals and weird objects move. And once, my brother and I even saw what we believed to be an alien. It was just insane. Anyway, I grew up and believed that it was all imaginary friends and stuff like that. My brother still remembers the alien, but for the most part, I thought we were just kids. Recently, my cousins, who lived two houses down, were telling us that the man who now lives there has gone insane and walks up and down the street at 3 a.m. saying things like, the devil is coming. He wasn't like that when he first moved in. I brought this up to my mum, and it turns out we moved because the house was haunted. My parents had experienced horrible things there too, and eventually did some digging to find out that the house was built over an old church and a bunch of other things. Anyway, it was so creepy. I was around four, living in a house with my mom and my mom's boyfriend. It was around three in the morning, I think, when I had woken up because I had to pee. I walked outside of my room to see a woman in white standing in the stairway. My room was on the second floor. I ran into my little sister's room to tell her. She went out of her room and saw her too. We both ran back into my room and hid under my covers, terrified. This was 10 years ago, and a couple of weeks ago, she said that my mom and her boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend, had seen her too. For them, it was around midnight. They were asleep, and my mom had woken up to see a woman standing in her closet. She thought it was nothing, and her imagination was just playing tricks on her, so she went back to sleep. The next day, when my mom's boyfriend got back from work, 
He went and asked my mom if around 12, she had seen anything that looked like a woman in the closet. She and her boyfriend started freaking out. Now we know that the house next to ours was actually a Civil War hospital, and many people had died in that house. Other things happened in that house, too. When my little sister was a baby, she would always point to the glass and say, Look, woman. No one could see her, but now we think it was probably the same person we've all seen. The other thing is, my mom's boyfriend and his cousin had gone into our attic with a camera and began to record. When they came downstairs and showed the tape to my mom, they could see tens of orbs floating around in there. Things like that happened all the time. And while it was interesting, I'm glad I don't live there anymore. My old house was unbelievably haunted. That's what we've always thought. But honestly, I believe in my heart that there's something attached to my family. I have a reason to believe that, but that's a story for another time. Back to the house. My brother and sister were home alone. They were downstairs watching a movie when they heard a door upstairs slam shut. They ran upstairs to see what it was only to find out that it was my bedroom door that had slammed shut. They opened the door and no one was there. My closet doors started subtly moving. They opened the doors to find out that my cross, which was inside of a shadow box, was flipped upside down. In case you don't know what a shadow box is, it's something that you put inside of a case with a big piece of glass in front of it meaning that you can't physically touch the item inside of the box. So as to how that cross flipped over, no one will ever know. My family has always been kind of religious, so in that moment, they were both like, we're leaving, we are not staying here tonight. They went into the laundry room to get some things. In this house, our laundry room was in the garage, so they went to go back inside and the door slammed in their face. It was locked. They opened the garage door and went around to the front door. It was also locked. They checked the patio door and that door was locked as well. Not being able to get into the house, they made the choice to call a locksmith. The locksmith came, but you know, in our area at least, locksmiths drive big yellow vans. But this guy pulled up in some old car. He came to our door and unlocked it in seconds and then he started hitting on my sister, asking her if she wanted to go out for drinks while he's on the job. So my brother calls the company to complain, and also this guy charged my brother way too much money, so he complains about that too. He calls the company and says, the locksmith you just sent was not following protocol, blah, blah, blah. And here's the scary thing. They responded and said, Sir, we haven't even sent a locksmith out to you yet. So who the hell was the guy that was just at our house? We never did find out. Every house I've ever lived in has been haunted. When I was three, I lived in an old trailer with my grandparents and my mom. I went into my bedroom, which was the computer room with a mattress on the floor, to get something. When I looked around, I saw a man in the mirror. He was quite tall, had on old Coke bottle glasses, and was in a dress shirt with suspenders. But my reflection wasn't in the mirror. I ran out of there so quick. I also had really weird dreams in that house. After a huge fight with my mom and my mama, we left to go live in my mom's childhood house. That house is where I've had the most ghost encounters and developed anxiety. So I absolutely loved this house. Anyway, I was around four when we moved and seven when I saw my first ghost in that house. I was upstairs and from my bathroom mirror, you could see the shower. 
All of a sudden, I looked at the mirror and I saw three fingers sliding down the shower door. I ran downstairs to my mom, and to this day, I don't go upstairs or take showers there. The second time, I was downstairs, and I heard a big crash in the bathroom, as though a bunch of pots and pans had fallen. But all over the house, nothing had moved. After that, I moved out with my mom. My mama still lives there. I still hear footsteps upstairs, and in the night, someone is watching me. Currently, I live in a different house with my mom and her boyfriend, and it's a little different. I haven't seen anything, but there's been more things happening to objects. My mom had a crown royal bag, and one day the strings got mysteriously cut. Also, the most recent, I had a friend over and we were about to go to sleep. When I noticed on my Polaroid camera, it's an antique from the 70s, that the handle had been cut. This happened about two weeks ago. About a year ago, I was texting my now ex-boyfriend, and all of a sudden an Avon compact that was sitting in the middle of my desk flew off onto the floor. It's still in our texts to this day. And that's all of my ghost stories. Except, of course, for the countless times that I have felt somebody watching me and other things like that. I'm not really sure what to make of it. So, I work for my local authority's cultural service. I can work in any one of the cultural buildings across the city, but one that I work in, I believe is definitely haunted. The building is 300 years old, used to be a farmhouse until the 1860s, and then an upper middle class family home. There have been a few occasions where I believe I've experienced paranormal activity there. One time, I was covering a Sunday shift. If I covered a Sunday shift, I always made sure we got in a tea break before we opened. So, three of us sat in the canteen having a drink and a natter. No one else was in the building. I was the key holder, so anyone getting in before opening time had to get in through me. Something in the building went bang. A bang like something heavy falling over. It seemed to come from the corridor across from us but nothing was out of place. The three of us heard it and the three of us searched the building to look for an explanation, but literally nothing was out of place. Another time, I was working on some admin in the office. I usually shared an office, but that day I had it to myself. The offices were the old servants' bedrooms. We had a volunteer working in the office opposite. She left to collect her things, ready to leave, just as her husband came up to collect her. I sent her husband back downstairs to meet her. Within a minute, I saw someone, and presumed it was the volunteer, come back up the stairs and go into the office. So I got up to tell her that I had literally just sent her husband back downstairs, but the office was empty. On a third occasion, I was in one room tidying something up. I heard footsteps walking toward me from the adjacent room. I was in the building by myself. Finally, again on my own, I was in what was essentially a gentleman's game room, polishing the glass cases. I had this overwhelming feeling that I couldn't explain the origin of, that I wasn't welcome in there being a woman. Now whenever I go in there, I can't stop myself saying something like, I know, but I'm just doing some polishing and I'll be out. And the feeling subsides or doesn't come on at all. I'm not the only person that's come out of that room with an odd feeling. Two girls one evening while locking up went to switch the lights off, and they both at the same time came out feeling scared and crying, but they couldn't explain why. My parents rented a house in a remote upstate area, and we moved in when I was 16. I lived there until I was 25. I'm now 31. 
Slowly, my sisters moved out later than I did, and my parents just moved out like six months ago. Here are a few of the encounters we've had. Every night, my sisters and I would hear footsteps coming up the stairs and going into the bathroom. Every time, we assumed it was one of my parents up for a late night bathroom run, since the only bathroom was in the upstairs area, where the rest of the bedrooms were, and my parents' room was downstairs. We eventually realized it wasn't them. Then we'd get up to use the bathroom and wait forever before knocking, only to find out that the bathroom was empty. My dog, who slept in my bedroom, would wake up at the same time every night, always around 3 a.m., and stare and growl at the dark area in my bedroom. My little sister and I, who shared the bedroom, could feel a presence, but we were too scared to look at the shadow. So, while looking at the floor, we would slowly pick up our dog, place him under the covers with us, and just pray that it went away. The main encounters happened in my bedroom. It must have been where it lived, or maybe there were multiple entities. But one time, my younger sister and I redecorated our bedroom and placed a new shoe rack right in front of our bed and lined up our shoes. We both sat down on the bed to look at it from different angles and see if we liked the placement, and a shoe came flying off the rack directly at us. We both booked it and didn't come back for hours. It liked to hide stuff from me, specifically me. I would be doing my makeup, and then after I used the foundation or lotion, I would go to put the cap back on, and it would just be gone from the vanity. It would happen right in front of me. Or I would spread out my outfit on the bed that I would plan to wear, shower, come to get dressed, and a piece of clothing from the outfit would be gone and nowhere to be found. Now, I'm sure you'll think maybe a sister, right, since there were four of us. Well, I thought that too, except that it happened consistently for years. I got used to it. I'd leave a note sometimes in the bathroom for family before I went out, with, for example, my foundation uncapped that said, the elf took my cap, if you randomly find it, please put it back on. That's what I always called it, an elf because of how mischievous it was. Later, I learned to give it gifts. I would place out my outfit or my engagement ring in its box, or whatever else was really important that I wouldn't want to go missing. And I would loudly announce in my empty bedroom, I need this, please don't take it, but I've left you this, for example, an earring, for you to play with while I'm out or asleep or whatever it was. It worked. I read that online, by the way, as I tried to find ways of cohabitating, since financially we couldn't move out. One day, my sisters and I asked the landlord what was in the attic, since there was one that didn't have a ladder to go up to it. And he told us that he didn't know. He'd bought the house as is many years ago and had never been in the attic, so he had no idea what was there, if anything. So I got the bright idea of let's check it out. We got chairs, which we stacked on top of each other while my parents were out, and I was going to check while my sisters held the chairs for me to climb on. Well, I opened the attic door, and all I could see was pitch black. I wasn't even at eye level into the attic yet, just barely could see into it, as I'm pretty short. So my sisters got a flashlight. I turned it on, went to put it on the floor inside to climb in, and poof. It went out immediately. I figured, okay, the battery's dead. My other sister handed me a lit candle to put on the floor so that I could climb in while the other one went to get batteries. And as soon as I placed it on the floor, poof, it got blown out. At that moment, I flipped. I closed the attic as fast as I could, and none of us ever planned on checking again. These are just a few descriptions of our paranormal encounters. My parents either never believed us, or they didn't want to. They never heard anything downstairs and never noticed anything. Until, when we all moved out and they moved into my old bedroom, where my mom would swear that stuff disappeared on her all the time, that lights got turned on and off, 
the doors open and close and so on. Then the landlord lost the house to foreclosure and my parents moved out into their own home about six months ago. The haunted house is now abandoned as nobody has purchased it and more haunted than ever, I'm sure. I wouldn't take any amount of money to go sleep there for one more night on my own. I moved into my current house yesterday. It's a typical middle-of-nowhere farmhouse with thick woods surrounding it. It's a house passed down through generations, starting with my great-grandfather's uncle who helped build it. He died while repairing the silo, the grain suffocating him. In his will, he wanted my great-grandfather to own it. My great-grandfather then died from a heart attack at the age of 93 in the bathtub. My grandma was next in line, and within a month of moving in, died in a car crash a few miles from the house. My mother then temporarily moved in, and she said she would sell it. Nobody would buy it because of the history. However, she did see some people walking around in the yard. She would later tell me this after I moved in. I just assumed either it was the TV reflection on the windows or her dreaming. And if it was true, it was probably just some teenagers messing around. I wasn't too worried and had my dog to keep me company. The first night, I was sleeping on the floor, as I hadn't bought a mattress yet. My dog was sleeping next to me and hogging the blanket. I quietly got up to go look for another one, when I saw someone quickly walk past to the kitchen. I was confused, thinking that maybe one of my buddies who helped me move in was trying to scare me. I walked to the kitchen and saw nothing. I must have been searching every corner and cranny for about an hour. I kept saying, that's really funny, but I need to go to bed. Eventually I gave up and grabbed a blanket and walked back into the living room where I'd been sleeping. My dog, who'd been peacefully sleeping, was in the corner of the room whimpering, staring over my shoulder. I got the chills and slowly looked behind me only to find darkness. I did a quick search of the house, turning on the lights and whatnot, but I found nothing. I decided to keep the lights on and I went back to my dog, Reuben. I settled on the creaky wood floor and threw my blanket over me. Reuben eventually walked up to me and sat down. Just as my heart rate was returning to normal and Reuben was snuggled up next to me, I heard an explosion from the kitchen. I jumped up and stood there. Reuben started crying again and went back to the corner. I grabbed some scissors and walked to the kitchen again. This time, the kitchen light I had turned on was blown out, broken glass shards everywhere. Jokingly, I said, you're paying for that, to who I thought was still trying to scare me. The moment I said that, an overwhelming dread came over me. I felt dizzy and out of breath, I noticed I was suddenly very cold. I chalked it up to the light being out. Must have made the kitchen colder. I quickly walked back to the living room to find Reuben staring at the wall. At this point, I'd had enough and I wanted to sleep at a hotel. I grabbed my phone and searched it up as I was unfamiliar with the area. Suddenly, Reuben snarled at the wall. I had never heard him do that before. I looked up, but everything was the same. It was just me and him. However, out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement. I turned and looked out the window directly left of me and saw a man in old attire walking toward the silo. He looked dirty and battered with a slight limp. I could see him because my mother installed a street light. Well, at this point, I decided I would confront him, thinking he was the man inside my new house. I opened the window and yelled at him. The moment I did this, he disappeared right in front of me. At this point, it was four in the morning and I was just done with it. I grabbed my blanket and Reuben and went to sleep in my truck. I woke up at 2 p.m. with several missed calls. It was my mom and sister trying to check up on me. 
I got back to them, and currently, I'm debating what I should do next. So this summer, my family and I stayed in a house in Germany for a week. It seemed nice enough, but right away, there was just a strange feeling throughout the whole house. I don't know how to explain it, but you know when it just doesn't feel right? So probably the first thing I should mention is that there were noises coming from everywhere. Footsteps, banging, that kind of thing. I should also mention that none of us talked about it being scary until we left and were in the car. So on the first day, when my mom and I were in my room and were hearing noises, neither of us mentioned it, even though we both knew that it was nothing, right? The first really scary thing happened on the second night. My room was opposite the conservatory, and every night there was a noise coming from there. But on this specific night, a chair freaking moved. Like, what the heck? On one of the other nights, and this is probably one of the scariest things, my mom thought she saw my brother running between his room and the bathroom. But when she asked my dad why my brother wasn't in bed, my dad walked out of the bathroom and said my brother was in bed. So who was that person running in between rooms? We all agreed that my brother's room felt the weirdest. Luckily, my brother is a complete lead box, so he was fine with sleeping in there. So, you can probably understand why my mom did not want to sleep in there when my brother went in with my dad on the last night. I needed to use the restroom so many times that night, I don't know why. And before I went for the last time, I thought I heard one of my parents getting up for the bathroom, because I heard footsteps and things moving around in there. But then... I realized that my parents' door had never actually opened, and when I asked them about it the next day, they said neither of them had gotten up. That same night, my mom was in my brother's room. She had put her Garmin watch on a book. She heard a noise, and the watch was half off the book. She heard a shuffling noise, and a thump, and then the watch was on the floor, and the sensor light was flashing. She came into my room and slept in there because she was terrified. One more thing is that everybody woke up loads of times every night. Usually we all sleep pretty well. I really don't know what to make of it, but I'm pretty sure that house was haunted. So, my family and I have been living in my house for about 18 years now, and I've noticed a few weird things happening, but nothing evil and sinister. There are a few spirits in the house, and they usually appear randomly, so they come and go as they please. But there will be times that you'll randomly look to a particular spot in the room, and you can picture them in your head, or you'll see them from the corner of your eye. The spirits in my house are both young and old. There are two men. One is my grandfather, and the other is unknown. There is a female, and she's unknown also. So are the two young girls and the boy. The older spirits stay with me in my room. The unknown male lays beside me or sits next to me on the bed, and the woman sits on the edge of my bed or sometimes lays next to me. One of the little girls peeks around the cupboard in my kitchen, while the other sits with me on my bed alongside the little boy, who also stands in my doorway. But there have been three occurrences that I know of that have happened to me besides the spirits surrounding me on a daily basis. The first was the shadow figure in the laundry. I had just had a shower, and I opened the bathroom door. The laundry light suddenly turns on. There was a shadow figure that looked like my older brother, so I said his name. Then I take a step forward and the figure rushes to the back door. I chicken out and run to my room to get dressed. Once I had done that, I told my dad, because my mom is a skeptic. The second was the shadow figure that was in my room. 
I was lying in bed watching some YouTube before I went to sleep, like I usually do. And I don't know about other people, but I always put my head under the covers because I don't like the dark. Anyway, I took my head out from under the covers, and I see a shadow run into my bedroom wall. I just put my laptop down on my bedside table and went to sleep. The third is the orb outside my front door. It was after dinner, and I was going to feed my dog. And as I was walking out of the dining room, I looked toward the front door, and there was a bright orange orb floating on the other side of it. I looked to my parents and back at the door, but the orb was gone. I don't really know what to make of these recent encounters. They're not like the other ones that I'm used to. What do you think? I'm a real estate agent. Also, for privacy, I've changed the names of the clients. This is one of the few haunting type things that I've ever experienced. Anyway, my clients, we'll call them Jim and Pam, had been looking for a home to buy for a while. We'd seen a few houses that were in their price range, but didn't have the features they wanted. So when a home matching their requirements and price point popped up on the market, we were all more than motivated to give it a look and hopefully make an offer. We scheduled a showing for 7 p.m. that evening. I didn't have much going on that day, so I got over there at around 6.45 p.m. And since I still had 15 minutes before the buyers would get there, I decided to look through the house and also turn on the lights as it was getting dark and turning on lights for a showing is always a good idea anyway. When I walk into the house, Right away, I notice it's fairly nice for the price that it's at. It seems to be underpriced by at least 10000 if not more, and that gets me excited. I know the buyers are going to want to make an offer, so I just have to make sure there's nothing super awful. As I make my way through the rooms, turning on lights, I come upon an intercom in a hallway next to the kitchen. I press it and talk through it to hear that the other receiver is directly below me in the basement. Very cool, as I've only seen intercoms in movies. Then I walk through the door frame into the kitchen. The counters and cupboards looked nice, but cheap. And then I noticed the refrigerator was open. Must have bad suction, I thought, or someone left it open. I think to myself to go over and shut it. I did so, and then I gave it a little tug, but it seemed pretty well sealed. So I figured somebody from a previous showing had just left it open. Even though the refrigerator has nothing in it, it's still a little rude of the last agent to not do a once-over and shut it. As I mull this over, the intercom buzzes and static comes through. I slowly walk into the hallway as it continues. And a few steps away, it cuts out. Hmm, I thought. Must have electrical shortages or something downstairs. I hadn't gone downstairs yet, so I figured I might as well go down there and turn on the lights and check to see what was going on with the intercom. The basement doesn't have a switch, just a pole string attached to a light in the middle of the room. The light from outside is coming in through the small windows, just enough so that I can see where I'm going, but not much more. Before I can pull the light string, I hear the intercom buzz back on, but this time, it's static through the basement receiver, so now the interference is coming from upstairs. I'm not really sure what's going on at this point. I turn on the light and run up the stairs. Again, the intercom stops as soon as I get close, but something in the kitchen catches my eye. I walk into the kitchen to find that every cupboard, drawer, and the refrigerator are wide open. My heart sinks and the hairs on my neck stand on end. At this point, the scare was over, but the clients called to let me know they had just arrived. It was 6.55ish, so all of this happened pretty quickly. I hurriedly slammed everything shut and tried to act normal. When I opened the door, Jim asked if I was feeling all right. I assume I was slightly pale. Look like you've seen a ghost type of appearance. I said that I was, and we quickly walked through the house. Nothing opened this time, and afterward, when I asked how they felt about the house, 
They both agreed that something felt off and dark. I told them that I sensed that too, but didn't go into detail. Needless to say, we didn't write an offer, and I've never gone back. Definitely creeped me out. Definitely haunted. When my husband and I first married, we lived towns apart due to work. We also had a toddler. We decided to move in together as quickly as possible and went house hunting. I have always enjoyed stories of supernatural or paranormal occurrences, and I joked about how much I would love a haunted house. I was later told by a clairvoyant that the universe delivers. We finally settled on a house that was in our price range. It was built in the 80s, so no concern of lead paint, and not a lot of historic value either. Everything went smoothly, for the most part. Our toddler would awaken in the middle of the night and explain that her stuffed animals would move or fly. We figured she just wanted to sleep with us. Moving was a big transition for such a youngster. We got pregnant with another kiddo quickly, and he went out of country for about a year for work. Things were normal for the most part. The baby, six to 12 month age range, would sometimes stare at the front door and cry or point behind me when I was doing dishes. I didn't think it was too weird. My husband returned and I eventually decided to remodel the house. It had not been updated since being built. It was a major undertaking. My youngest was probably two years old at this point and the oldest was six. I became convinced that our house was haunted at this point and continued to be convinced for about two years. It's hard to remember the time frames for everything, but I will describe the activities that occurred during this two to three year period. I had a dog who required medication twice daily. It would frequently go missing. I would later find it in the same spot that I always kept the medication. One of my daughters would talk about the little boy that lived in the closet and that she was afraid of him. So we moved the two girls into the same room because we felt that they were perhaps lonely. This gave my husband a room to dedicate to his man cave and online PC gaming. My husband would talk about seeing a shadow dart back and forth in the hallway. I had a dream that when we took down the sheetrock, we found a secret room with dead twins who warned us to get out. All of this stuff seemed like normal occurrences that happen in life. But then I finally became convinced that the house was haunted. My children and husband were all in bed. I had clean laundry waiting to be folded on the chase, but decided to sprawl out on the couch and watch the breakfast club instead. Alone time was rare. All of a sudden, a shirt flew from the chase and hit me in the face. I ran to the bedroom and my husband was asleep. I woke him up and he said that he didn't believe me, but I know better because he got really anxious and couldn't sleep after that. The next big event occurred when my youngest told me that there was a man in her bathroom. We had a security alarm, so I knew that that couldn't be true. I had her take me to the bathroom and show me. She described him as being all black and pointed and said, he's right there, he's right behind you. I told her we would just leave him alone and go about our day. We had other things happen that we just explained away. I woke up to a shadow figure hovering over my husband. My dogs would wake up in the middle of the night and bark at the foot of the bed. I would hear noises coming from the kid's room and get a terrible feeling whenever I would go and check on them. I sometimes had to walk through a cold mist to get to their room. My dogs would also sometimes bark in the hallway. I finally called someone to intervene when my husband met me at our door, freaking out. I worked weekends and I would always come home and tell him about my day while he played on his computer. The kids would be in bed by this time. I would then go and shower and go to sleep. This night, my husband said that I had already been home and talked to him about my day. I had then told him that I was going to go shower. 
So when he then heard the garage door open and the car pull in, he immediately panicked. I was frightened to hear this as well. An entity taking my identity made me feel helpless. A coworker got me in contact with her friend who has special abilities. Her friend came over with another medium. They smudged our home and put quartz crystals in the corner. It was all free. They told me that the limestone behind us held energy which attracted transient spirits and entities. Some good, some not. The shadow man stayed because of my husband's PTSD and was attracted to the negativity. They also said domestic abuse had previously occurred in the man cave at some point and that it was a big focus of the negative energy. They taught me to smudge and told me that I have ancestors by my side keeping me safe. Things would still happen on occasion after this. We spoke to our Muslim friends about it and they thought it sounded like a jinn. These creatures are mischievous and can be good or bad. They gave us a religious artifact from their hometown that had a prayer in Arabic carved in it. We kept it on our mantle and never had trouble after that. They would always laugh at us at Christmas time when we had our Christmas mantle decorations and our Muslim artifact. It's still a treasured item that we have to this day. We have since moved, but we did spend a decade in that home. And the more I think about it, the more I'm sure that it was haunted. I know that there's something in my house. When my husband and I bought this house, we were told that the woman who had lived here previously walked from the bedroom to the kitchen, collapsed on the kitchen floor, and passed away three days later in the hospital. Apparently she collapsed on a Wednesday. Our bedroom is the same bedroom that she had. This summer, we were sitting out on our deck enjoying an evening breeze when I see a shadow walk past my front window through the blinds, coming from our bedroom and headed to the kitchen. I freaked out thinking that somebody was in our house. Our son was staying with his aunt that night. We came running in, stupid thing to do if somebody was truly in the house, I guess, and we searched every nook and cranny, nothing. Now we're hearing voices, and the other day, my soda flew off the table by the rocking chair. I think I made her mad somehow, but I'm not really sure what I did. And I'm not really sure what to do now. It seems like things are about to get interesting. I live in a three-story, four-bedroom new house. Prior to it being a house, this plot of land was a residential home, and before that, I have no idea. My partner, our young children, and I have lived here since it was built, nearly six years ago. I've never felt anything bad or good in this house, except for the bedroom on the top floor. That bedroom was our youngest child's bedroom. It was her bedroom from about six months old until about two years. She never slept well ever. She would always wake up during the night, sometimes crying uncontrollably. We just put it down to her being a crappy sleeper. However, sometimes if we couldn't settle her back down, we would bring her into our room, which was directly next to her room. She would just sit and stare into the hallway outside and would refuse to be put down near the doorway. And if we tried to carry her out into the hallway to show her nothing was there, she would freak out. She no longer has that room as her bedroom. She shares with her older sisters now. The middle child, a boy, now has that bedroom, and he claims to feel fine in there. However, when it was our youngest daughter's bedroom, she would wake in the night, and my partner would go downstairs to make her a bottle, and I would go in to comfort her. While comforting her with my back to the door, I would always feel like there was something or someone watching me so much so that I would feel forced to glance back over my shoulder. That's the backstory. During a conversation we were having as a family tonight, 
Myself and my partner were talking to the eldest child, 15 years old, and she just so happened to sleep in her brother's room last night. He was at a sleepover at a friend's house and she wanted to escape the two younger ones. We asked her how she slept, totally normal question and we certainly didn't lead her answer in any way. She said, eh, not so great. I felt on edge, like somebody was watching me from the doorway. I wasn't scared, I just felt anxious. How she described her feelings was exactly how I had felt in the past when I would often be in there comforting our youngest. Neither my partner nor myself have ever spoken to the children about this before, so there's no way she was just regurgitating what we've said. I felt a shiver go up my spine when my stepdaughter said this tonight because it was so accurate. My partner immediately looked at me as if to say, wow, that's exactly what we've said. A friend recommended we invest in some selenite to place in and around the room, and we might do that. But I just wanted to share this story and see if anybody else can relate. I've had many paranormal experiences in my life, but this one has stuck with me for a while. This all happened a few years ago in a little hick town. My friends and I were bored as hell, so we decided to find some trouble to get into. My friend mentioned a super creepy house in the middle of nowhere that had been sitting empty for a little over a year. We decided that since we didn't have anything better to do, we should go and check it out. So the six of us crammed into a car and headed over there. It was around 3 a.m., middle of summer. The moon was full and it lit up everything around us. We parked a little ways up the road and walked up to the house. It was definitely spooky in the moonlight. It kind of looked like the creepy house from the Blair Witch Project. We were originally just going to walk around the property, but my boyfriend at the time decided to kick the door open and explore inside. Three of my friends stayed outside to watch for cops. The cops didn't normally patrol the area, but we wanted to be extra safe. The other two and I went inside. I made it maybe six feet into that house before I got hit with a really weird, heavy feeling. It felt like I was wrapped up in a thick blanket, but instead of being warm and cozy, it was cold. I got out of there as fast as I could. My boyfriend and our friend, let's call him Tim, teased me, saying that I was being a wimp. I knew something was weird in that house, and I refused to go back in. Tim decided to record their walk through the house. After walking through, Tim picked something up, threw it at my boyfriend, and started screaming to try to spook him. Well, it worked and they ran out. The three of us then started looking through a shed in the back. We found various hunting traps. They looked pretty old and rusted, so I assumed they were just hung up for decoration. My boyfriend decided to take one to remember that night. I'm pretty sure that the trap he stole had something attached to it. A lot of weird stuff started happening at our place after that, but those are stories for another time. We left shortly after. When we got back, we watched the video that Tim took inside the house. After we laughed at my boyfriend's screams, Tim said he thought he had heard something weird in the video. So we played it back. And sure enough, while they're running out of the house, there's a voice in the video that doesn't belong to either of them. It was a woman's voice, clearly saying, she died here. We collectively lost our minds. I was the only girl there that night, and the sound of them screaming and running would have drowned out my talking, and like I said, I had already left. I wish I still had the video for proof, but I had a falling out with Tim and deleted our messages, so I don't have the video anymore. I still beat myself up over not saving it. I used to be terrified of the paranormal, so I didn't save it when he first sent it to me. I've come to accept since then that I'll always have weird paranormal experiences and it'll always be a part of my life. 
Still, that video was the first paranormal experience I've ever had solid evidence of. When I was a teenager, my family moved into a new house in Ohio. Well, it was new to us. As soon as we moved in, my mother started saying that she felt the house was haunted and that she could sense a presence there. She said she heard somebody call her name and felt somebody put a hand on her shoulder. One time she woke up with somebody holding her feet down and she couldn't shake off whatever it was, so she started screaming. She also heard muffled voices. We didn't believe her at all, until both my sister and I started experiencing strange things. My first experience was when I was reading a book in my bedroom at 3 a.m. I'm a night owl, so this wasn't that unusual. Everyone should have been asleep, but suddenly I hear very heavy footsteps right outside my bedroom door. They were too heavy to be my mom's or my sister's, so I just assumed that my dad was walking around checking up on us. I sprinted to the door, and when I opened it, I was shocked to discover the hallway was dark and nobody was up. Our attic had several feet of fluffy insulation covering the entire area. There was nothing stored there, but at times you could hear steps coming from the attic, running up to the side of the house. They always ran up to the side with the driveway, as though they were trying to see who arrived, and this happened almost every time that somebody would pull up to the house. In the daytime, it was almost cool, but in the nighttime, it was terrifying. There was always something clicking loudly under my bed and in the closet at night, and I always tried to convince myself it was the air vents. However, all the air vents were on the other side of the bedroom, and they never made clicking noises. I sometimes saw an outline of a person standing next to my bed if my head was covered with a sheet, but when I pulled the sheet off, nobody was there. I heard sighs, as though somebody was standing right behind me, and one time, I heard a whisper that said, Come play. I prayed a lot, and that usually helped. I would also ask them to quiet down, and that helped as well. One time, my boyfriend and I were doing homework in the basement and heard the garage door open and voices of my parents in the kitchen. We ran up to say hi, only to discover an empty house. Another time, my boyfriend stayed overnight in our house and he slept in the living room. In the morning, he asked if we were all playing a joke on him at night, as he kept hearing a ball bounce on the stairwell leading up to the bedrooms on the second floor and in the kitchen. But every time he got up to see what was going on, no one was there. I don't think we even owned a ball, and we certainly didn't play with one in the house. One time, my mom heard a baby crying outside of our house at night. We lived in a safe and perfectly normal suburb. There was no reason that a baby would be in our backyard. Another day, a lid flew off of a cooking pot and got halfway embedded into the kitchen ceiling. It wasn't a pressure cooker. It was just a regular lid and pot. Another time, we left for a family vacation and my boyfriend was asked to take our paper in. He said that he was in the house and decided to make my bed for me. We had left at the ungodly hour of 5 a.m. and I never got to it. He said at first he got a juice and felt like somebody was breathing down his neck in the kitchen. He kept turning around to find nobody there. Then he walked upstairs and while he was making my bed, he felt something grab his legs from under it. He got freaked out and ran out of there and he refused to enter the house again. He just diligently hid the papers behind a flower pot outside until we returned. One night, my sister woke up to a black caped figure standing silently in her room. She said there was also a bright orb near her window. Her windows faced the backyard and trees, 
and being on the second floor, there was no possible source of light from cars and things like that. She covered her head with the blanket, and when she looked out, the figure and the orb were still there. She went back under the blanket, and after some time, they were finally gone. One day, our cat disappeared without a trace, and we never did see it again. Not sure if that was related. My dad was one person who never experienced anything. No voices, no steps, no TV and radios blasting out on their own. He is hard of hearing, so that could be a factor. But one thing he can't explain is waking up at 4 a.m. next to a lit tea light candle that he swears burnt out at midnight. The candle was right in front of his face, and he's extremely sensitive to light, to the point where he covers any electronic lights with napkins because they disturb his sleep. It eventually got so bad that I refused to sleep in my own bedroom, as I could feel someone move around the room at night, and I slept in my sister's room. My dad decided to call a medium, and the guy said that there were five spirits in the house. A boy, an old lady, a couple, and a very angry man. He gave us a giant candle with a cross and said to burn it in the bedroom of the youngest child, which was now also my bedroom, where I slept in a sofa chair. The candle was in a big glass jar and was hefty. All night it kept shaking and the glass kept making clicking noises against the counter that it stood on. We were also to tell the spirits that this was our house and that they needed to go to the light. Things improved after the visit and shortly after I moved out to attend college, where I slept for years with the lights on, although I never experienced any paranormal activity in my apartment there. After college, I never stayed in the house for longer than a few days, always sleeping with the lights on, as that creepy feeling remained, although nothing notable happened anymore. Eventually, my parents sold the house. A few years back, one of my best friends and business partner was, and still is, a single dad. His ex-wife was in and out of mental institutions for years, and he had sole custody of his two kids, a boy, age 10, and a girl, age 14. My friend had to travel to New York to oversee the multimedia setup for the auto show for the Ford display. I was back at the office with the programmers during the day, and I would stay with the kids each evening. Their house was a new two-story rental in the Woodlands, Texas. The development was built in a heavily wooded area just north of Houston. Weird stuff started happening the first night I was there. I was watching TV with the kids. The den lights would go off. The light switch was on the other side of the room. I went over and the switch was turned off. I thought it was a problem with the breaker, or there was another light switch. But if there was another switch, who turned it off? I flipped the switch on, the lights came back on, and I went back to sit down. The lights went off. I walked back, and I found the switch flipped back down to off, manually. That disturbed me. This went on for a while. I asked the kids if this had happened before, and they told me that every now and then, the lights would go off. So now I'm trying to act unconcerned in front of the kids. Suddenly, there was a loud crash in the attic. I, we, went upstairs and opened the attic door to check. There was nothing in the attic. It was completely empty, and thus we had no explanation as to what had made the loud noise. I'm thinking that there's someone else in the house. Their mother had shown up unexpectedly before at their old house, but she was in jail at the time and supposedly didn't know this address. Things quieted down and it was eventually time to go to bed. I let the family dog in, a lab, checked all of the doors and made sure they were locked, and then I went up to the guest room 
which was between the kids' bedrooms. I left my door cracked, and I had just turned the bedside lamp off. As I was laying down, I saw the silhouette of a boy crouched down between the cable box and VCR lights on the other side of the room and myself. I thought the sun was getting ready to try to scare me, so I turned the bedside lamp on and said, gotcha, but there was no one there. Then there was another loud crash in the attic. This woke the kids up and now they were scared. We then heard a door slam downstairs. I told them that it was a new house and noises happen. I also told them that I would sleep in the day bed out in the hallway. I made my rounds again and we all went back to bed. When I woke up the next morning, the kids and the dog were all asleep on the floor next to my bed. I still had four more nights to go. The next day, I got to the house as it was getting dark. The wind was starting to pick up and all of the tree limbs were swaying. There was thunder in the distance. However, the kids seemed fine. I helped them with their homework and made dinner. No, we're not going to McDonald's again. And we all finally sat down to watch TV. The storm was worsening and there was more thunder and lightning. The den in the house was huge, with large floor-to-ceiling windows, and the walls went all the way to the rafters. There was an interior balcony on the second floor that wrapped around three of the walls. There was an exterior balcony facing the backyard. You could see through the upper windows out to the lower part of the outside balcony. So now, the rain is coming down in sheets, the wind is blowing, and bursts of lightning are happening everywhere. Suddenly, the daughter says she sees something moving out on the balcony. I look up, and it looks like a pair of legs in dark pants scurry past one of the windows. I'm thinking, do I get the gun out of the master bedroom? But that opens up a whole new can of worms. So instead, I run up the back stairs from the kitchen to the second floor hallway and out through the balcony door. The wind is blowing cold rain right into me, and I get soaked, but I don't see anyone on the balcony. I go back downstairs and tell them there's no one outside. Shortly thereafter, I tell them it's time for bed. The son goes right to bed and goes to sleep. The daughter is afraid of storms. The dog won't go into her bedroom and her cat is nowhere to be found. I tell her that I will sit with her until she goes to sleep. I bring a chair into her bedroom and set it on the left side of her bed. We talk about storms and I tell her about being in a tent in the army during really bad storms and how nice it is to be in a house for this storm. We both fall asleep. There's a loud clap of thunder, a flash of lightning, and I see a dark figure about five feet tall standing in the far corner of her room. I jump to my feet, but now I don't see anything. I don't want to wake her up, and so I carefully walk around her room and check the hallway. I slowly sit back down. I eventually doze off again. Later, I hear a noise and I started to look around. The cat is curled up on the foot of her bed and the dog is starting to lay down at my feet. The storm has passed and looking outside her bedroom window, stars are shining up above the tree line. I go lay down in the day bed out in the hallway and just as I fall asleep, I hear a door downstairs slam shut. It sounds like the kitchen door to the garage. I go downstairs. The kitchen door, door to the garage, and front door are all shut and locked. I start to walk over to the master bedroom suite, but something tells me not to go there. I head back upstairs and lay back down. What seems like seconds later, the alarm goes off and it's time to start a new day. I have to get breakfast going and it's my turn to drive school carpool.
Most of the days in that house went about the same. All I know for sure is that something was wrong with that house. My mom bought a house when I was in the second grade. It was built in 1856 or 1857, I'm not entirely sure. The guy who built it was a prominent doctor. He had a few kids, but I don't know a whole lot about him. I do know that over the years, a couple of people died there, mostly him and his kids. But we got the house because the woman living there had lost her sister and she wanted to move into a nursing home. The house was not used to treat patients, so far as I know. There was a hospital built maybe 80 yards from us, where I'm fairly sure he did most of his work. I know that place is very haunted, but nothing malicious as far as I know. Anyway, I feel like that's enough background on the house. We lived there in the early 2000s. I was six or seven, and we moved out when I was 13. We didn't live there a very long time, the house just seemed to be bad luck. We had a dog named Snowball. He was an American Eskimo dog, 20 pounds, fluffy, and white as, well, snow. He would just stare in dark corners a lot, as would my cat. I'd hear my mom call for me a lot, but when I went to look for her, she wasn't even home from work yet, or hadn't called me. A few times, we would be in the kitchen or the living room, and we would hear something digging through my shoe boxes full of Polly Pockets. My bedroom was directly above the living room and the floor was thin. When we would go upstairs to look for the cat or the dog, they were usually right there in the living room with us. The cat liked to stay under the couch, but when we would investigate, all my dolls and accessories would be thrown about my room and the door was closed. Snowball liked to chew on my dolls, as he had a gum disease, and I guess it felt good. But he really didn't like being alone, and his favorite spot was on the green couch, where he would look out and watch the street. He was also old, and only went upstairs when it was cold. And we would all sleep in one room, because he liked the heater. Otherwise, he was downstairs. My cat did the same thing. She was often very close to us. She liked the spot on the red couch where she could watch TV. None of the pets liked going upstairs unless we were there. I spent a lot of time outside, but I also liked to sit in the office. I would play Neopets, RuneScape, and watch videos on various sites. I'd feel like somebody was watching me all the time. I'd turn around, but I was alone. Sometimes when I was outside, I know that my mom was still at work, but in her bedroom, through the window, I would see a man looking down at me. I don't remember being afraid of him, just kind of got used to seeing him. My mom would always say, oh, that's just Dr. Green. I would wave to him and he would just vanish. One night, I woke up and somebody was sitting on my bed and it was freezing as they were pulling my blanket down. I woke up mad and then panicked because pulling at my blanket was the man in the window. Then I could smell it. Something was burning. I woke my mom up and we found that the microwave was shorting out and had burnt through the cable and was on the verge of catching fire. After that, I made my grandmom take me to his grave and I'd leave flowers for him there all the time. Dr. Green was a nice ghost he would just appear, and he only woke me that one time to warn us. Then there was Luke. Luke was malicious. He terrorized the pets. It's why they wouldn't really go upstairs. He always appeared in dark corners, and I could never bring myself to walk past him. It felt like if I did, something bad would happen. He was more active, too. Cabinets would fly open, things would fall off shelves, and he would throw things at us. In the dead of night, you could hear heavy boots slowly climbing the stairs. Sometimes the TV would randomly flip channels. You'd hear groans, and he actually attacked us. 
I regularly had nightmares, and I would wake up with strange bruises and cuts and scratches. This was also happening to my mom. We know his name is Luke because my mom used to record QVC and this sewing channel on the VCR. I think it was QVC, and they were doing some craft thing, but they asked the caller what their name was, and very clearly in a masculine voice, someone says, Luke. Then the woman who was actually the caller and was live on the show goes on to say her name and go on about the product. We were only guessing that the friendly ghost was Dr. Green, as the man always appeared in similar clothing to the photos that we had of him, very nice suits and a hat. Luke was dressed in ratty looking clothing and he wore huge boots with spurs. I can still hear his boots clanging up those squeaky steps. Lastly, there was the ghost dog. I love animals, but I hated this dog. It was huge, black, and made me feel sick to my stomach whenever it would appear. And it appeared everywhere, outside the carport, downstairs, upstairs, and especially the cellar. I could hear its toenails clack on the hardwood, and I would hide under my blankets. The hair on my arms and neck would raise, and I could hear it sniffing me. It makes my skin crawl to think about that dog. If you looked at it, it would growl and vanish. But I only saw it twice. I heard it all the time, though. I would also have nightmares about this huge black dog following me around. It was a recurring dream that scared me so much as a kid. I'd be in the yard and there was a creek that ran through it. It went under the road and there were those huge steel cylinders that let the water pass. I could crouch and walk through them, but I'd see the dog there and it was guarding what looked like a kid's body. It would immediately wake me up. I never thought to look up and see if a child had died there. I was a kid and it scared me to even think about it, but I still see that dream vividly. I own a big black lab, Great Dane mix, and sometimes he gives me flashbacks to that dog. I could go on and on about the odd things that happened. More happened to my mom, and she has weird pictures, videos, even called a priest to cleanse the house, but I don't think it ever helped. It may have, but the people who live there now have fixed up the house a lot. I've been tempted to knock on the door and ask them, but I feel like that would be weird. I drive past the house every time I go visit my grandparents. Also, stepping back on the property makes me feel uneasy. When we were moving out, I was packing my things. Something knocked over my corkboard, and I was frustrated because it broke. I told whatever it was to leave me alone, that I was leaving. I turned back to what I was packing, and then I heard a voice behind me very clearly say, if you come back, I'll kill you. I don't want to take my chances with the paranormal. With a threat like that, I don't want to mess with it, especially as this voice was very different from Luke's. It hissed, it made me feel sick, and made the room very cold as well. Whatever this thing was, I don't want to get to know it, and I don't want to tempt fate. This happened in 2021. My family and I were living in a pretty old house at the time, like really old. There was mold, wood creaking in the middle of the night, and when the wind would blow, it sounded like the windows would shatter. I have three different things that happened at this house. My dad and I were driving back from a spirit Halloween store for Halloween decor because it was around that time of year. When we were walking up to our door, we heard a loud bang on the window, near the bottom right corner. We had cats at the time, but they never really jumped at the windows, and we checked. Two of them were asleep upstairs, and the other one was outside, nowhere near the window. My thought was maybe something had fallen and hit the window, but nothing was laying next to it. 
If you take the palm of your hand and you slap it on your window, it sounds exactly like what we heard. The second thing that happened to me was a little creepier. There were wooden floorboards that led from my kitchen to my living room. The kitchen had a tiled floor and the living room had carpet. Whenever you would walk through these wooden boards, they would make a mind-numbing creaking noise. Now, I've had my cats walk over these boards and they won't make a sound. And my cats are decently large and heavy. When I was home alone and sitting on my couch, I heard the floorboards make a noise. I've heard them make noises before, but this one sounded directional. I was obviously hesitant to go check, but eventually I did and there was nothing there. The third thing that happened is almost impossible for me to explain. I didn't see this one, but my dad did, and I didn't know this up until today. He walked into the kitchen and passed the countertop. As he walked, a small glass moved about four feet across the countertop, almost as though somebody had slid it. There was nobody in the house at the time except for me, my mom, and my dad, and we were not there, in the room. The windows may have been open, but even if they were, the wind couldn't have been enough to slide that glass across the table. This one is kind of a bonus, but not necessarily that creepy. I have a habit of speaking in my sleep. I've said really weird things before, like get the shovel or run. But my parents said that in this house in particular, they heard me scratching my wall in the middle of the night. My bed was pushed up against a wall, and apparently my hand was in the air clawing at the wall. Another creepy thing happened too. My room is hallway adjacent to my parents. Apparently in the middle of the night, I sat up and blankly stared into their room. My dad looked over and asked me if I was all right. I didn't respond, but I put my hand up and waved, kind of like Forrest Gump in that one gif. I'm not sure if my house is haunted or if I'm possessed or both, but weird things are definitely happening here. When I was between 2 and 14, I lived in a haunted house. Lights would turn on and off without any people in the room. My little brother, who was about three, would point and scream and cry at the corner where the front door connected to the garage wall. The worst thing was, I used to get in trouble for wearing shoes in the house while people were asleep. The thing is, I didn't even wear shoes in the house. I would take them off the minute I got home and leave them by the door. Whenever I left my bedroom door open during the night, I'd see a very tall man in a sort of old-timey barbershop hat standing in my doorway. When I closed the door on him, I would hear him walk down the hall. I'm also fairly certain that there were two graves in the crawl space under the house. I mean, anthills aren't usually six feet long. Right? I am a 27-year-old female, and my sister is 26, with a husband who is also 26, and a 9-month-old baby girl. They got married coming up on two years ago this summer. Just before they got married, they started to build a new house on a plot of land that's essentially in the woods, on a dead-end road with most of the 16 acres going uphill. The road itself is pretty quiet, with maybe 10 houses total, pretty spaced out new houses. They only have one next door neighbor. This is important. So, as I said, they just built this house not even three years ago. The thing with the property, though, is that they found at least one, and maybe another, partial house or building stone foundation. 
Now, our dad, being the history detective that he is, had found an old property map that basically said that there used to be a farmhouse right where their now backyard is, hence the stone foundation. My dad has gone there to do metal detecting quite a few times, and he's found some neat stuff. Some was just the typical metal containers, cans, trash, and junk that he found at the foundation, tossed in by who knows. But a few neat things were a belt buckle, what appears to be, according to his treasure hunting online forum, either a woman's or a child's sword or knife guard, and that dates to when the farmhouse was there, in the mid to late 1700s. Now for the spooky stuff. So, I've stayed overnight there a few times, in the guest bedroom, over a year ago at least. My sister and I went out drinking, and I just ended up staying overnight. I was alone in the guest room, snuggled in bed, when I felt like something, or someone, was watching me. So much so that I pulled my blankets over my head and tried to sleep. Then I had the urge to close the closet door randomly. I eventually fell asleep and thought nothing of it after the fact. I never mentioned it to her or her husband, since they're both highly Catholic and participate in church and stuff, so I didn't think they would get me. That's the only experience I've had, if that counts. Fast forward to now, she sent me a photo on Sunday which sparked our conversation. The picture was of her side entrance door that goes into the mudroom. In the top corner window, there is what appears to be, I haven't seen it in person, a smudged handprint. At first my thought was, okay, maybe the builders did it, or maybe it was something there when the door was being made or put on. So I told her that, and then she texts back that it's not on the inside or the outside of the window. It's between the panes. Weird, right? My sister said that it was definitely not there before, since she's basically a neat freak and has washed the door windows before, many times. My second thought was we've had some rain and humidity recently, being almost summer and all, so maybe it was some moisture of fog and stuff like that that was between the glass panes that just looked like a handprint. It literally does look like a handprint, though, after looking at the picture for a while. I'm studying the picture, and I start to get this weird thought of maybe it's somebody scoping the house, but it's on the top window, facing downward, and it's as if they, or it, had their left hand pointed down, pressed from the outside. I tried to recreate how it would look or feel if I did it myself, it's an extremely awkward position, especially if you're peeking into a door or window from the top pane, like six feet off the ground. She was thoroughly freaked out, I think. I usually try to eliminate all of the obviously logical reasons of what it could have been. A raccoon? A person? Moisture? I ask her if she's had anything weird happen, out of curiosity. This was her actual text message back to me. Quote, I was running on the treadmill a couple of months ago at night. My husband was gone, and I got a very forceful tap on my left shoulder, like someone wanted my attention. End quote. Obviously, I've redacted her husband's name. I think it was probably a muscle twitch or something, but she was freaked out after that. Then she goes on to say, Quote, and I hear voices sometimes. My husband thinks I hear the neighbors, but when I'm inside, it literally sounds like a man and a woman on our porch. End quote. It was a super quiet area. Like I said, they only had one neighbor. It could have possibly been her neighbors with sound traveling or something, but still. I asked about the baby, and she said that she does look off into random corners like she's watching something, but that doesn't seem that odd to me for a nine-month-old. Nothing really with the monitors, either. I'm going over today after work to see my niece. I meant to mention to her to maybe check on her carbon monoxide detectors, just to be safe. So, I'll tell her tonight. 
It's one of those situations where some of the stuff is pretty weird, and other stuff could possibly be explained. I was hesitant to even tell the story, since nothing super or overtly paranormal has happened yet. Just feelings and weird things. But I wanted your thoughts. What are your suggestions? What do you think is going on, if anything? My family never really had money. My mom was a cleaning lady for the majority of my life, and occasionally cut hair on the side in our basement. My dad was the get-rich-quick type who never wanted someone like a boss to answer to, and his ego, unfortunately, got in the way of making a living. At times, he did make some big money, but it was always in lump sums, which he spent as quickly as he got. In 1998, he invented and patented this newly engineered golf club and partnered with a few investors and money was coming in frequently. He was even doing interviews on the local news about it. It caught some major buzz locally and then nationally within a couple of years. Finally, he was bringing an income into the household. We always rented. I lived in three houses I know of by the time I was eight years old. Around my 10th birthday in 2001, my mom and dad told us they were looking for houses in a nicer area to buy. About a week later, my mom brought my brother, two sisters and I to see a house not far from the house that my parents rented. We pulled up and it was huge. Well, huge for us. We walked into the front room and it was wallpapered with, well, the only thing I could use for reference would be Snozberry's wallpaper from the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie. The carpet was mint green and had two white French doors going into the dining room. The previous owner's son, who was a middle-aged graying man, didn't exactly greet us with a smile. He almost looked frustrated, like we were late, but we weren't. My siblings and I looked at each other as if my mom was crazy for wanting this weird-ass house. Then we saw it. He showed us into the kitchen. The kitchen was huge, with high ceilings. It was half of the first floor, and all knotty pine. The walls, the cupboards, the walk-in pantry, shelves that rounded the entire kitchen. That was the selling point. It was beautiful, and something you don't see much of in humble old colonial homes. Two small bedrooms upstairs with barely a hallway, both naughty pine as well. A little overkill, and also creepy for a bedroom that isn't in a cottage, but hey. My parents opted to make the whole semi-finished basement into their master bedroom. My mom was dead set on buying it, and persuaded my dad. We still talk about how all of us felt this pull into this house. We moved in a couple of months later at the end of summer. My job that afternoon was to attempt to put mine and my brother's bed frames together with the headboard. I didn't know what I was doing, so I started stacking all the nuts and bolts to see how high I could get them before my dad finally came in to do it for me. My mom promised my sisters, who were directly across the hall from me and my brothers, that if they got the smaller room, they could paint it. So my brother and I got the bigger room, with one built-in dresser and a little small door that went into a huge attic, which was another room in itself. I haven't dared to go into the attic or even wanted to open the door though. The door looked like it was meant for children though, almost like an entrance to a tree house or a door for a Keebler elf's hut, like on those cookies. I didn't like that, and I definitely didn't like that I had to sleep next to it. As I'm sitting there stacking nuts and bolts, I hear a woman clearly say, no. I look into my sister's room thinking that it's one of them, or my mom, but it wasn't. I would have heard somebody coming up the stairs and hit the hallway. So I turn around in my sister's doorway and I feel the air get thick. Like I could almost feel the body heat from someone standing too close. 
I can only explain the feeling as almost like that feeling when you can't focus because someone keeps fidgeting and moving around. I ran down the stairs and out the back door where my mom was smoking a cigarette, talking to our new neighbors. To them, I just looked like some kid running around the new house, but I was terrified. Fast forward to winter and we're all settled in. My godparents came over to give me a gift a couple of weeks before Christmas. I opened it and it was a lime green comforter that had football helmets of every NFL team. Cool, if I ever cared about football at all. It was big and warm, so it quickly became my favorite thing in the world. They left late and we were told since it's Saturday we can watch TV in our rooms until whenever. So I brought my new comforter to bed and turned on a nick at night, quickly falling asleep. I wake up and the TV is still on. Mind you, mine and my brother's twin beds are right next to each other and both are against a wall with a gap in the middle to get out. I look over at my brother and his back was to me. Then I go to look at the TV, which is directly in front of us on the built-in dresser, and I adjust my eyes. I see a woman sitting on the edge of my brother's bed, dark long hair, what looks like a dark purple cardigan and a dark floral skirt. The only light source was from the TV and it was illuminating her features. I couldn't put into words or reference how she looked until recently when I watched the movie The Knowing, which is a horrible Nicolas Cage movie. But in the movie, you couldn't quite see all of the alien's face, just a silhouette of the light and darkness. That's the best way I could describe it. I see a ring that appears to be catching light on her finger. I have no clue if it was on her finger or if she was holding it. She just sat there on the edge of my brother's bed, head down and admiring this ring that was catching the light off of my television screen. She didn't seem to notice me. I tried to sink into my mattress and slip my head under my new comforter, and I just laid there in shock. I waited until I heard my mom start the coffee pot to run to the kitchen and tell her what had happened. I even drew her a picture. She believed me. My dad, not so much. Almost the exact same experience happened again two years later with my sister when we switched rooms because two teenage girls obviously need a bigger space. There was nothing paranormal that we noticed happening in between those experiences. It happened and we would never bring it up. My dad's new and improved golf club had one little problem. There was a defect. The head was flying off left and right on numerous orders. My dad was back to being broke. You'd think a mortgage, a wife, and four kids would give him a little pep in his step to get a steady job, at least in the interim, but nope. Back to the drawing boards and back to us kids helping clean banks with my mom on the weekends for extra money. The fighting started, the divorce happened, Dad moved out and mom stayed in the house with us. By this time, I'm 14, my first year of high school and finally I could go out with my friends, even the ones who had cars. My mom started drinking heavily on the weekends around this time and would frequently call whatever friend I was with that had a cell phone and spout out her Taco Bell order because she knew we would end up there at some point before I came home. My sisters worked doubles together at an Italian restaurant every weekend, so my mom would always be home by herself having a pity party and getting drunk. My mom calls my friend and I tell her not to answer. I told her that I would just get the regular Supreme burrito with no beans that she always orders. I get home and she's in the living room and she starts telling me about a man she was talking to. He looked like a young Elvis, she said, and he sat in the chair across from where she laid on the love seat. She was drunk. I didn't pay it any attention. She was just rambling about a dream, I was sure. The next day, the friend who my mom had called came over and told me that she wanted to play the voicemail that my mom had left her when she called the day before. My mom had said, Hey, I just wanted to see what you guys were up to, and if you go to Taco Bell, could you get me the regular thing I ask for? Then the phone stays connected. She never hangs up. At first you hear nothing, then a conversation between her and a man. 
At points, she interrupts him, wondering who he is. You can't really tell what he's saying, only bits and pieces, but my mom's voice is clear. Then he told her at the end, as clear as day, please lay on your side just in case you get ill. I got instant chills. My friend was visibly disturbed, even after already hearing it, and I felt sick. We played it for everyone, and they all had the same reaction. My mom remembers none of it, she doesn't remember telling me about the man, and she doesn't remember the incident. We forgot about it, and we never talked about it anymore. My dad got sick of living with his own mother, and the house was in his name, so he legally kicked my mom out, and at this point my older sister moved in with her fiancé, and my other sister moved with mom to a house that they rented a few minutes away. My brother and I stayed behind because my mom got a job as a caregiver for that winter in Florida. As soon as my dad moved back in, things took a turn. He did not believe in ghosts. He was a huge skeptic. Until around 2007. He sat up in bed late at night and was smoking a cigarette. He had a big solid oak sleigh bed and it had a huge headboard. He started hearing knocks and felt the vibration on the headboard because his back was resting on it as he sat up. He stood up and it stopped. He sat down and relaxed his back, back up against the headboard. Something started knocking, then pounding hard on the headboard. He stood up and came to the basement stairs and called us down there so that we could witness this, trying to make us believe in something that we already knew was there. A couple of days later, Christmas lights flew across the room like somebody had yanked them. A couple of days after that, loud sounds of what sounded like scraping metal across concrete came from the attic. A week later, my brother's sleeping and gets punched in the face. A couple of days after that, my dad's girlfriend sees a hand appear over him in bed. That upcoming weekend, the kitchen chair moved into the hallway while we were all in the living room watching movies. Coffee teaspoons and hairbrushes would disappear and reappear. Sounds of people going up the stairs. Friends who knew nothing about any of this would see what looked like someone walking back and forth from the upstairs bedroom. It got bad. We were all terrified. My dad was screaming into the void. He couldn't protect us or beat the ass of whoever was doing all of this. By this time, my dad was working, probably just to get out of the house which meant he had to take plenty of business trips. While coming home from Virginia, Bate had it that at the airport, he met Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson from the sci-fi show Ghost Hunters. They were coming to investigate a haunted prison for the show. My dad just started watching their show because of all the things happening in our house and only went over to them with the sole intention of getting help for what we were going through. They set him up with contacts to a paranormal group that they knew well for our area. They came, they saw, and they told us that it was definitely paranormal activity. The psychic said that there was a man who liked to hang out in the basement and the living room. A greaser type, with slicked back hair and cigarettes rolled in his sleeve, kind of like a young Elvis. Also, he loved my dad's new car. A woman who was reserved and quiet who liked the attic and the naughty pine bedroom was there too. An impatient and angry old woman who paces around everywhere and likes the living room was also there. The team set up cameras, tripods, and microphones around the whole house before shutting off the lights. The only things eventful that happened the night of was a camera and a tripod were thrown to the ground in the attic and everyone heard that metal against concrete scraping sound. It was so loud it sounded like it was in the middle of the room. They left and when they came back a few days later, they had evidence. A woman's voice was caught saying no before the camera and tripod flew forward in the attic. The investigators, while bending down to go through the attic door to set up the tripod, said that one of the cameras in the naughty pine room caught a woman saying, crawl out, you have to crawl out. There were growls. There were snarky remarks said in the basement and a man's voice saying, where is she? The investigators did the whole spiel. You're dead, it's time to go to the other side. It was a lot to take in. 
My dad, who was raised Catholic, asked if they could set up a home blessing, which we got that afternoon and we all had to take part in. It did definitely settle down after that. There are a lot more things that went on in that house, but I'm writing a novel over here. This house somehow sticks with all of us in my family. My friends still talk about the house. I dream about it all the time. It sounds funny, but there's a definite trauma that lingers when you spend your adolescent years living in a place like that. I think it's so strange, like it still has a hold on all of us. Everyone's pins, passwords, and top secret codes are the numbers of that address, still, and we haven't lived there since 2010. The weird pull that we all have to this house, telling each other when we happen to drive by it, the way we weirdly miss it, it's just strange. My family friends lived in a small coastal town in California, and it has really old buildings there, including the original state capitol. They lived in an older house built around the 60s or 70s, and it was a single-story home. I was small, maybe two to four years old, and my parents never let me or my brother go there. My uncle and auntie didn't really let anyone else go there either, because of, well, all of it. It was haunted by a little girl or something. They would see a shadow, ironically the dog's name is Shadow, down the hall, hear a laugh, doors would slam shut or suddenly open, and they would hear footsteps running around. The dog, Shadow, would stare down the hallway and start to growl and bark, and even start to whimper after they found scratch marks on him one time. After this, they didn't want anyone to go to their house, especially not kids. The daughter, who is the same age as I am, came crying to her mom, saying that the little girl with black hair and white threw a toy at her. The oldest brother had his lights flicker, his dog barking and his door slamming shut all the while. It scared the crap out of everyone. But one night, Another one of my uncles had to drive by their house to pick up my uncle and auntie to go to a party. He saw a girl that looked like the daughter crouched on top of the van with her hair over her face, just tapping on the windshield of the car. He called my uncle to ask if their daughter was outside, but he said, nope, all the kids are at their grandparents. But as soon as he got off the phone, it was gone. In the morning, they saw a small handprint on the driver's side window and small scratches on the front windshield and a dead mourning dove on their porch. They moved about five months later. When I was a young child, about 10 or 11, I moved into a small country town. I've been there before and my parents grew up there. Everyone who lives there knows that the whole town is haunted, from the school and even the church hall to everything else. And once it goes dark, most people who live there go inside because you can see spirits walking in dark places and that's pretty much the extent of it. But the house that I lived in had a spirit who likes to mimic voices, specifically of your loved ones, and even likes to look like them. It would only target me and my older sisters, and only when we were home alone. I would wake up with bruises and scratches, same as my sister. One time I was home alone and heard my older sister call out for me from our room. I got up and saw her walk into our room just slightly, but I could tell it was her. I called her name, but she didn't answer, so I followed her in. I entered our room and saw that it was empty. I thought that she was messing with me, but she's pretty tall, so there wasn't really anywhere she could hide. Then, suddenly, I heard the front door open. 
I went and saw my older sister with the rest of my family coming home. She hadn't been there. This wasn't the first time that something like this happened, and it certainly wasn't the last. Fortunately, I moved out of there about two years ago, and I've never woken up with a random bruise or scratch ever again. In order to set a little background, this took place in Western Wyoming. It was a small town, and at the time it had maybe 2,500 people. This was the first home that I lived in during the time that I spent in Wyoming. We moved here because of my dad's job. The family and I weren't very enthusiastic because we loved our home in Oklahoma. My dad and mom went up and looked for houses without us so that we could finish school and wouldn't have to stay in a hotel. The housing market wasn't doing so well, and the choices were very limited. In fact, it came down to one choice. The house that we had to move into was built in the 1930s, and it was rather different from the house we moved out of. It was single story with a large basement. The staircase to the basement was immediately to the left when you walked into the front door. No door at the bottom and the steps were steep. It was fairly dark without any lights on. We move in within three weeks of being told that we're moving. My dad spent the first night there alone and never told us what he experienced until years later. We were about eight to 13 years old between my brother and sister, so he didn't want to scare us. He decided to sleep in the basement because the TV was down there and the basement was fairly large. He said that it was late around 2 a.m., when the TV turned on to static by itself. He's not bothered too much by it, but then he hears a door creak open and some footsteps. After doing a little investigating, he lays down again, but doesn't sleep much due to weird noises. Jumping forward sometime, this would be my first odd experience that would make me a believer later on in life. Every night, my sister and I would pick a VHS movie from a large bookshelf in the basement. Since I was too afraid to sleep in my room in the basement, we slept in a bunk in my sister's room. My mom tells us that it's time to put in a movie and go to bed, so we agree to head downstairs. My first choice was one of my two favorites, which was The Land Before Time. I asked my sister, without turning around, Does Land Before Time sound good to you? After about a minute, I get impatient, and I say, well, how about the Lion King then? Not much more time passes and I get upset, and I tell her, fine then, if you're not gonna say anything, we're gonna watch my movie. As I slowly turn around to address my sister, I see that nobody is there. Here's the real kicker. I look back to the large bookcase and see two shadows, plain as day my shadow, which is to the left, and a smaller shadow that clearly looks like a little girl on the right. This is when I realize something is not right and I freak out. After screaming and starting up the stairs, I take one final look back to see that the little girl is moving down the hallway to my room. Well, at least her shadow is. There was absolutely nobody in the basement to produce that shadow. The shadow disappears into my room, and then to top it off, the light comes on. So I'm screaming bloody murder at this point, and I run to tell my parents. They tell me that it was just my imagination. So then I ask where my sister is, and they tell me that she's been in her room waiting for me to bring up a movie. Again, years later, I get told that they had both seen a little girl in the house too. They knew full well that it was not my imagination. The last thing that happened was to my brother. He had a room in the basement, but he wasn't a chicken like I was. One late night, he was woken up to his door creaking open. He thought it was me because sometimes I would get scared and come sleep with him. After a few moments, he said a small head peeked through the door. He said, what's wrong, buddy? Can't sleep? 
the door slowly shuts and he hears footsteps down the hall to my room. He decides to get up and come see what, who he thought was me, was doing. After leaving his room, he sees my light is on and my door is open. He walks into the room and every single toy from my wooden toy box is out. This is very unusual for me because my parents were quite strict and would kick my butt if I left my room like that. He asks me the next day what I was doing down in my room so late and I had no idea what he was talking about. My mom vouched that I was passed out in her room after we all watched movies. To sum up this story, my brother and I both had recurring dreams about a little blonde girl being stuffed into my toy box in the closet. Another dream that we both had was this kind of tall old man beating us in the basement bathroom. We've come to think that maybe a kid was killed in that house and the negative energy manifested because of that. Something I forgot to mention, all the toys were cleaned up the next day and were meticulously placed, all standing up in an odd order. Nobody in my family ever placed them like that, and no one had been in the basement aside from my brother, and he said that he certainly didn't do it. In any case, I'm really glad we don't live there anymore. All the homes in my neighborhood were built in 2009 or 2010, seven homes in all. One of the homes across the street was purchased by a single female with two boys and a child on the way. Her boyfriend did live with her, but didn't help purchase the home, and he was not a good guy. They fought all the time. I'm pretty sure he was on meth, and he cheated on her constantly. He even tried to approach me. So, I reiterate, not a good guy. Toward the end, he started getting abusive. She had him locked up, but let him come back when he got out. One day, an ambulance showed up at the home. We were all told that he had committed suicide, had gotten high on meth and shot himself in the bathroom. All right, this was believable. After his death, she asked me to help her watch the home as his friends and family were accusing her of killing him and were pulling up into her driveway and then leaving and basically just trying to harass her. I thought this was suspicious, but whatever. As a single mom, she had to work all the time. The oldest boy would watch the little one while she worked. He would always come down to my house to stay, but wouldn't tell me why. But I liked the kid, so no worries. About four years went by like this and she told me she was moving. I was kind of shocked because these were really nice homes and fairly cheap, but I figured it was just because of what had happened previously. Finally, she told me that they were moving because of the paranormal activity in the home since his death. The little one was the most bothered by it and that's why he stayed at my house all the time. She proceeded to tell me what really happened. They were in a fight and he had a gun in his hand and was threatening to shoot her. They had a struggle over the gun, resulting in him shooting himself behind the ear. He fell to the ground, crawled down the hallway, and died in the living room. The little one said that he could see him at night, crawling down the hallway. The doors would open and close on their own, and they would hear disembodied voices and feel negative energy, stuff like that. She said her guests would see and hear stuff too. She wouldn't go into much detail and I understood why I didn't press the issue. The boys were struggling in school and she wasn't doing so well either. They moved and the house sat empty for about a year now. Well, my daughter and her husband have decided to purchase this home. I asked them what they would do if they saw him crawling down the hallway at night they joke about it, but I mean, come on, that would be some scary shit. If you've never really experienced anything paranormal before, or hell, even if you had. My son-in-law is a huge skeptic, but my daughter has had some experiences. I wonder if it's still active or if he moved on when they left. 
a morbid part of me can't wait to find out. So this isn't anything too crazy, but I do have a little story about my childhood home. It was the summer of 2012. Life was good, and I was up at 2 a.m. watching Teen Nick in my house's den. The whole house was always fascinating to me. One of the first houses built in our small town in Kansas during the Prohibition as a moonshiner's illegal party house. The whole house is a colonial style, full of Victorian features. From the outside, it looks like a two-story, but there are actually three floors and a half a basement. The architecture was always confusing as to how this was accomplished, but wedged between the top and main floor is a log cabin-themed room, our family room and den. It was a glorified bar room fitted with a monstrous fireplace an Alaskan moose head from about 1920, and a salvaged chandelier from the former Douglas Opera House. I always hated being in that room at night because I always got a weird sensation, like someone standing over me, when I would try to sleep on the couch after a long night of TV. My best friend and I also felt like this from time to time, sleeping in my own bed, which used to be the master suite. Never could get the cat or the dog to hang out in the den, though. Its door was an inch thick of solid wood and had a very complex lock that remained tucked inside its latch since no previous owners had the key. We never bothered to close it. It would get stuck in the frame because it was so heavy, designed to keep the police out if someone tipped off a booze party. There was a nursery on the top floor that shared a wall with this room. It was sold to us with no doorknob to the small four by 10 room. It became our home office. There was a brand new computer and an all-in-one printer and fax machine that remained unplugged, rarely used. My bedroom was right next to it and I always slept with my door open. In the middle of the night, I could often see the computer light up and paper would cycle through the printer, the unplugged printer could never get myself to check it out until the morning. Whenever I looked on the sheets, there was nothing on them, and we would just load them back inside. It was my sister and I's favorite place to pirate scary movies. We would close the door so as not to disturb mom and dad since it didn't latch. But one night, she left me in the room to go get a snack, and when she came back, she couldn't open the door. I was trapped inside. My mom had to use a butter knife to force the handle. I was kind of shook given the timing. But back to the den. I'm minding my teen Nick business when out of the blue I get a call from my friend. She tells me that she's doing a Ouija board session, which I've always done my part to stay far away from. She says that her presence told her to call me. She informed me that I was wearing a black shirt which I was, and I only own one. I hung up the call and immediately went to my bedroom to wait out the next few hours to daylight. That same summer, my mom, grandma, sister, and I went on one of our late night drives where we would blast oldies cruising the back roads. As we were driving, an unidentifiable creature ran in front of our car and across the road. None of us agreed on what we saw. We thought that it was a very large white rabbit or cat or small dog. It was moving unthinkably fast for any of those animals though. It made it across the road in two hops. At the time we joked about it and kept on our way. When we got home and stepped into the foyer, heavy work boots start down the upstairs hall and down the stairs. They stop at the den level. From the foyer, you can see the part of the staircase that leads to the den, and no one is there. We're all looking at each other, waiting for my father to continue his trip down the stairs. Then he comes up from the basement, followed by our dog. The cat is chilling in a window on the main floor. We sent him upstairs to investigate. 
He checked everywhere, even the attic, and there was nothing. Could all be a coincidence. When we moved into an apartment that fall, nothing else strange seemed to happen though. I'm tempted to ask the family who lives there now if they've ever experienced anything. The original owners are buried in the morgue just down the street. And sometimes I think they make a trip to their old home. In 2006, I was 18 and had moved to Victoria, BC with my best friends. We were working as construction laborers for said friend's father, and he had put us up rent-free in a very old home close to downtown. Not directly related to this story, but from our living room, we could see Beacon Hill Park. It was literally 50 feet away, and the father's favorite local watering hole was the James Bay Inn Pub which we frequented often. Both, I realized afterwards, were places of numerous accounts of paranormal activity. The Beacon Hill doppelganger is a well-known, well-documented, unbelievable story, and I suggest Googling it. The James Bay Inn pub was formerly a care center in the 1940s, and a national treasure of ours, Emily Carr, passed away in a room that is now the men's washroom for the pub. I did not experience anything at either location, but I'm just emphasizing that Vic is supposedly one of the West Coast's most haunted cities, and the proximity may or may not have had something to do with this, but I digress. The house we were in was very unsettling right off the bat. Holes in the upstairs drywall, like a previous tenant had thrown their entire body at the wall. The unfinished basement had two by four framed walls, no drywall, isolating several bedrooms, which were pieces of plywood on four cinder blocks for a bed. Squatters had been there. It had windows with no panes of glass anymore, only wrought iron to block intruders. Just a place you only go to use the laundry machine or dispose of trash. The trash is important. The kitchen was obviously old, had faded green linoleum floors and a big spot in the middle that had been sanded down to the wood subflooring and we thought nothing of it. Being in our first place with no supervision, we were typical semi-responsible guys and treated the house with a decent amount of respect. After a few months of working and partaking in nights on the town, as well as drinking a fair amount, we grew lazier and more careless in maintaining our space. For some reason that I can't totally recall, we had begun to throw our bags of trash into the basement, as it wasn't being collected by the city. This became increasingly easier and easier to do. We had two puppies living with us, a Chihuahua and a British Bulldog. One day after work, I was taking a shower and the Chihuahua was mulling about in the bathroom. The door had no handle just a small chain lock so it could sway three to four inches open or closed. A very distinct three knocks occur and I see the door move. No biggie. I just say, almost done, assuming my friends needed the bathroom. The dog is now trying to get into the tub or shower with me. I finish up and towel off and go tell my buddies that it's all theirs, but nobody's home. I call them and they're all at the gym and have been for a while. I grab the dog and leave immediately and we drive around the city as my mind races. I return later and my story barely shakes up my very macho friends. Maybe a week later, I'm in bed and I have a floor lamp with a dimmer and an indicator LED on that dimmer to let you know that there's power to the light. The light is fully on like every night so I close my eyes and the light is now off, but the LED is on, so I know the light has power. After I get done checking that it has power, I think nothing of it, close my eyes and the light goes back on. I say a few prayers, sleep, everything's okay, but something had adjusted the dimmer in that room. 
Next week, I find myself home alone with the dog sitting on the living room couch. We had a set of flimsy sliding double doors that we kept closed and they were directly across from me. Out of nowhere, the doors shake as though somebody had punched them as hard as they possibly could. It was loud and extremely aggressive. So again, I grab the pooch and beeline for the front door, exiting the living room. I remember preparing myself to see something down the hall as I leave the front door, but I see nothing, and I drive around town for a few hours. After this, my friend and the bulldog would sleep on the floor of my room every night, and the other friend would start sleeping in the living room right beside us. They had smaller encounters, like faucets and lights switching on and off, but neither was the type to talk much about it. But my macho friends were all sleeping as close together and to me as possible. They were freaked out. I never saw an apparition and those stories were as scary as it got. Upon having enough of the job in town, I informed the friends and the father that I would be moving back to the mainland. Months later, word got back to me that their dad never told us the previous longtime owner of the home had passed away in the kitchen and hadn't been found for three months, hence the scrub down linoleum. As he said it, the gentleman had almost melted into the floor and the dad knew that we wouldn't want to live there with that knowledge. As months went by and I thought more about it, it dawned on me how much we disrespected his home. We had a five foot tall trash mountain in his basement, which we never went down to anymore, just threw the bags down the stairs. And the house in general was just a mess. I concluded that he was manifesting his energy to, in a sense, tell us to clean up our freaking act and rightfully so. I never had any sense of malice or ill intent upon me. I truly believe he meant us no harm. I don't think he wanted to terrify us either. It's just that he was part of that house and wanted some respect. There's a little boy that inhabits my mom's house. My mom has owned her home for 18 years now. There have always been small, bizarre occurrences around the house, the kind that you can explain away or simply ignore. Things falling off of counters or going missing, strange noises or that feeling of being watched, footsteps down the hallway all the time. We never talked about it and I never felt scared or even had any idea that our house was actually haunted. Until one night. The bathroom at the house is located at the very end of a long hallway, and my bedroom is directly next to it. It was summertime, and I was about 14 or 15, that age where you would stay up talking to your friends on the phone all night. I was on the phone with my best friend. It was 4 a.m., when I distinctly heard footsteps running down the hallway, into the bathroom, and the bathroom light clicks on. Immediately, I get up to check out what's going on, thinking that maybe it's one of my younger sisters. If somebody like my younger sister was running to the bathroom at 4 a.m., obviously something is wrong and I wanted to help. Maybe 10 seconds elapsed before I look into the bathroom. There's nobody there and the light is on. I check on my sisters and my mom. Everybody in the house is sleeping like the dead. I'm absolutely horrified, and my friend on the phone experienced the whole thing with me. The next day, I told my mom. She tells me that she knows the house is haunted by a little boy in a red sweater because she has seen him herself running down the hallway. Years later, my stepdad on one end of the hallway and my mom on the other both see him again, the boy in the red sweater. He yells like a child playing and runs down the hallway into the bathroom, and then he disappears. Something about this is just inherently sad to me, the idea of a child stuck in a purgatorial loop. What was he running from? What was he running to? Who is he, or who was he? And what happened to him? Thank you. 
I live in a relatively old house in Scotland. I have always felt another presence at home, and I have believed in the paranormal since forever. It all started when my sister and I heard the floorboards creak in the middle of the night. When she went to check, nobody was there, and the entire family was fast asleep. A little while later, I woke up and I saw a little girl in my room just looking at me, before literally jumping and never seeing her again. Until recently, I always thought that I had tricked myself into imagining her, as I remember dreaming about a child and playing with this girl. The other day, my sister heard a little girl giggling. She's the only girl in the house now. When she told me, I instantly connected this to seeing the little girl. But perhaps this could explain more occurrences as well. My sister once told me a while back that sometimes when she looks out of the corner of her eye at the doorways, she would see a shadowy figure darting from room to room. I didn't really believe her. Well, until it happened to me. I was sitting in my parents' bed because I sleep in a closet-sized room with no Wi-Fi, and I glanced up to see this shadowy figure skip into the bathroom. I immediately went to check to see if anybody was there, and to my surprise, the room was empty. But nothing will ever scare me as much as what happened about a year ago. I woke in the middle of the night or early morning, which is very unusual for me. I should mention that I sleep facing the wall as I hate being open to the rest of my room. I laid on my back for a brief second or two before hearing three perfectly synced and identical claps. At the time, I assumed some robber or burglar was checking to see if I was awake, so I bolted under the sheets and faced the wall, lying motionless as I was terrified. My brother and sister were away at the time, so I was home alone with my parents. In the morning, I asked them if it was them, and they said no. My parents have never been sleepwalkers or anything of the sort. After doing some research, I found out that apparently ghosts clap to communicate sometimes. My biggest regret is not looking to see who, or what, was clapping. My whole family believes me though, excluding my skeptical brother. Can anyone explain this? Or has anyone experienced anything like it? I'd love to know. I live in a small town in Canada, and my house was built in 2007. Before that, it was farmland. My great-grandmother and her kids immigrated here from Ecuador in the 70s. Throughout my family's bloodline, every woman in the family is believed to have had some kind of sixth sense. My great-grandmother's sister was a powerful medium. My grandmother's older sister is also a medium and reads palms. My mother does tarot readings and informs me on her past experiences with ghosts when she lived in Toronto with my grandmother and great-grandmother. Ever since I was a baby, I've been seeing ghosts everywhere. My grandma told me that I would point to the corner and talk to it like somebody was there. I'm 16 now, and I've been living in this house for the past 15 years. Paranormal experiences have happened to me here for as long as I can remember so it's just a normal thing now. My mom doesn't encourage me thinking about those things, though. She tells me it's all in my head. A month ago, my dad's parents came up from Texas to renovate our basement. On their last day, my grandpa told me that he thought our basement was haunted because of all the voices he was hearing near the cold room. I told my mom about this, and she lowered her voice and told me that she had lied to me. She had said that it was all in my head, but she'd been telling me that to protect me. It wasn't all in my head, and that I had been seeing ghosts. She used to keep me in her room as a child and pray to God to keep the spirits away from me, because she saw them too. So far, I've noticed one ghost or entity or something that keeps reappearing in different places. I first saw her when I was eight or nine, 
my cousin and I saw her in my closet. She had pale skin, long blue-black hair, and wore a deep blue dress. The most notable feature is that her nails were painted a shiny metallic blue that glistened in the dark. She held out her hand to us and we ran away. The second time was when I was 11. At the time, I had a loft bed that was up near my ceiling. My bedroom is on the second floor. I was lying in bed after coming home from school and I saw that lady slowly walk by my window. Her nails were still painted that shiny blue. It was the most notable ghost I've ever seen. Ghost in quotations, because I'm not really sure if that's what she is. Apart from that, my younger brother and I, Lex, both saw a glass cup on our table slowly slide over to the other side of it. I always see figures in my room and hear music in the shower drain. My entire family hears people talking in our bedrooms. My brother and I have started to wake up with long scratches all over us. The house was blessed by a priest when it was made, but I don't think it worked, or maybe it wore off. I'm getting scared, and I don't know what to do. Update. We had a priest from our local church come to bless our house again, but I don't think it was effective. A few weeks ago, I had the house to myself with my brothers while my parents and grandparents were out. Lex and I were watching TV in the living room when we saw our youngest brother, Michael, age 10, sprint out of the washroom and into the dining room, which isn't visible from where we were. We didn't think anything of it until Michael came out of his bedroom on the second floor to get snacks. We were absolutely terrified and retreated upstairs. Maybe I'm just doomed to live in a house with ghosts. If you like haunted houses, you would love my dad's home. It's a two-story brick home, built by a family back in the 1840s. It was owned by the same family until my dad bought it. There's a rumor that it has a tunnel entrance on the property because of the Underground Railroad. I lived there by myself for several years during college. Dad lived with his girlfriend. Paranormal stuff happened on the daily, so much so that it was just routine. Footsteps throughout the house and going up and down the stairs during the day was typical, but mostly at night and in the early morning. If it was at night, I would usually just turn up the TV. Several times, I was woken up by a man who shouted, Hey! When I'd look around, a man's silhouette could be seen leaning casually against the doorway of my room. I got the feeling that this ghost didn't like me, but I didn't really give a damn, and I would just roll back over and go to sleep. Often, I would also wake up to the feeling of my bed shifting, as though somebody had sat down. Once I felt something rub my back, not in a malicious kind of way, more like a motherly way. I'll also experience very strong and sudden aromas. They'll come out of nowhere and last just for a few seconds. Usually it's cigar smoke, my dad and I don't smoke, old lady's perfume, or freshly baked bread. Items would always go missing and then magically reappear in other areas of the house. You never, ever feel alone. You always see somebody just out of the corner of your eye. I had to keep the blinds closed because I kept seeing somebody walk across our front or back porch, but nobody would ever be there. I always got the feeling that if you glanced at the top of the stairway, you would see somebody standing there. Very often, I would hear feminine humming. It definitely had tune and inflection. It wasn't our central heating or air conditioning or anything mechanical like that. After a particularly active paranormal night, the next morning, there was a random, dirty, rusty, handmade nail, about three inches long, laying on its side outside of my bedroom. The only time I felt genuinely scared was when I was playing a video game at about 4 p.m. I heard the front door open, and my dad whistled his distinctive whistle. 
I heard footsteps and keys being placed on the counter. Without looking up from the game, I said, Hey, Dad, I didn't know you were coming here today. I would have ordered pizza or something. He didn't answer me, and I thought maybe he just didn't hear me. So I paused my game and went into the kitchen. It was totally empty. No keys on the counter. His shoes weren't by the door. The door was locked and his car was not in the driveway. I thought, wow, kind of rude for him to leave so soon. So I called him and said, where'd you go in such a hurry? Dad sounded confused. I haven't left work. I'll be here late tonight. My dad works about an hour and a half away. There's probably more things that I just can't remember right now. My friends have all hated that house and they would never come over. Whenever family comes over, they get weirded out by the vibes, which is strange because most of them don't believe in these things. I grew up in southern Pennsylvania, not far from Gettysburg. When I was eight years old, my parents decided to build a house on vacant property, surrounded by fields, and it was beautiful. I lived with both of my parents and my two older brothers, who were 15 and 17 at the time. Though I grew up in the area, we only stayed in this house for four years. My first night there was not what I expected it to be. I was laying in my bed and had just closed my eyes. Then I heard a voice that sounded like a soft whisper about six inches from my face say, help, help, over and over, just repeating the same word until I finally fell asleep. I tried my best to forget about it because I thought there was no way the house could be haunted. It was brand new. Certainly I was just tired. About a month goes by and I'm sitting on my bed doing what I used to love doing most, which was read. I glanced up and looked at my doorway because I had seen something out of the corner of my eye. At that moment, I had officially seen a full body apparition of what appeared to be a soldier from the 1800s but he didn't see me. He was just walking by my room very slowly. I still remember every detail of his appearance 20 years later. He was covered in blood and looked like he'd been shot or stabbed. This lasted for about five seconds. Still being creeped out, my curiosity got the best of me and I walked out of the room and searched all over the house, but I found nothing unusual. About a week or two goes by, and I'm in my bed, trying to fall asleep yet again, only to be disturbed before I even had the chance to close my eyes. This voice was very deep and masculine. I couldn't understand a word it was saying because it was speaking in a different language. It sounded annoyed and angry. It happened every night at the exact same time for two weeks before it suddenly and inexplicably stopped. After that, I had a night terror. I am absolutely terrified of spiders. I had woken up in the middle of the night and I could see what looked like a tarantula crawling on me in bed. I swear it was there, I definitely saw it. I was panicking. My dad came in the room to check on me and found that everything was okay. No spider. Before I could fall asleep though, I heard what sounded like two men laughing right next to my bed. At this point, I was getting used to all the messed up things that were happening. One summer, I stayed up late every night so I could watch Hannah Montana at midnight. One night, when the clock struck midnight, I heard my back door downstairs open. Then I would hear a woman say my name as if she was calling for me or looking for me. I'd hear the door shut, followed by footsteps, and then there would be silence. This happened every night for almost two months. It never failed. It didn't even bother me at this point. I knew it wasn't my mother because she worked 12 hour night shifts at the hospital almost every night. There were no other females around. 
but one night it too stopped altogether. I was up at midnight and nobody had called my name. I went to sleep and everything felt peaceful for once. I woke up to the sound of someone knocking on my bedroom door. I looked at the clock on my cable box. It was 3 a.m. I assumed that it was one of my brothers and I told them to go away. But then the doorknob started turning, but it wouldn't open because the door was locked. I have always slept with my bedroom door open, always, and I definitely wasn't the one who locked it. The knocking and doorknob rattling went on for what felt like forever, and then it stopped. A few minutes later, I hear what sounds like scratching at the door. I think to myself, what the heck, is it my cat? But then the knocking, scratching, and turning of the handle start happening at the exact same time. No way in hell my cat could do all three at once, let alone the knocking and turning of the doorknob. It would happen for about 30 seconds, and then it would stop. It happened at least five times. Sometimes the knocking would be so hard it sounded like pounding, and my whole door was shaking. Whatever was on the other side of that door really wanted to come in. It got so bad that it woke my dad up. He heard all of the commotion, and as soon as he opened his bedroom door, it all stopped, instantly. He called out to me, but I was too afraid to say anything. He went back into his room and closed the door, but the same scenario repeated itself three more times. My dad made me sleep in his room. We never spoke about it, ever. Things seemed to be fine for a while. Then whatever was in my house struck again. My brother had gotten up to go to the bathroom. He turned the hallway light on, noticed that my bedroom door was closed as it was across the hall from the bathroom. He comes out of the bathroom and the hallway light is off and my bedroom door was wide open. He looked inside my room and saw me still sleeping. Everyone else in the house was sleeping. He woke my dad and brother and told them what had happened. They searched the house for a possible intruder but found nothing. More months go by and we are all awoken by our smoke detector going off in the middle of the night. We all go downstairs in a panic just to find out that the stove was on, full blast, big flames on top of the stove, in the middle of the night. What the hell? One day it was just my father and I. My mom was at work as usual. My oldest brother was at work and my other brother was at baseball practice. I'm downstairs, but I hear what sounds like somebody running upstairs. Forgetting that both of my brothers aren't home, I go up the stairs and see somebody run into my brother's room and slam the door. It was loud. I thought for sure it was my brother, and I wanted to go in there and see what he was up to and why he would be running around like that. I opened the door, and nobody was there. I watched the door close right in front of me. I felt sick to my stomach just standing there, realizing that the only other person that was home was my father, and he was in the shower. I continued to see weird things all the time. One day, in the middle of the day, I saw my German Shepherd run upstairs full blast as if she was chasing something, but I never saw what she was chasing. Whatever it was went under the bed, and she was viciously growling at it. At first I thought it was my cat, until I saw him sitting on top of the bed. It appeared that he had been sleeping until we burst in and woke him up. One night, my cousin was spending the night. We were walking through the living room when she saw the reflection of another person on the glass of our big bookcase. Another time, we were in my backyard, and she told me that she saw somebody looking at us through the window. I guess this happened on a few occasions, but it wasn't anybody we knew. My brothers almost never had friends over, so that was not a possibility. I remember one day I was walking down the basement stairs. When I got to the bottom of the stairs, I saw what looked like another apparition, except the apparition looked exactly like my older brother, but it also didn't look human. It was almost white and blue, and his eyes were pure black, like something trying to be him. 
When he saw me, his eyes got really big and he looked terrified and ran away and went into the crawl space. I ran upstairs to find out that my brother wasn't even home. I never went back down there after that. A few months later, I was with the same brother and we were in the living room watching George Lopez late at night. I'm into the show, but he muted the TV. He looked at me and said, did you hear that? I told him no, I hadn't heard anything. We sat still for a minute and then I did hear it. Together, we both heard footsteps coming up the basement stairs. My brother grabbed a baseball bat and we went to the basement to investigate, but to no avail. The rest of our family was sleeping upstairs. The next night, my mom was up late at night sitting at the dining room table, doing whatever it was she was doing. Around 3 a.m., the shelf in the dining room flew off the wall and put a hole in the wall that was adjacent to it. We looked at the nails in the wall that had held the shelf in place, and they were still perfectly straight. We moved out of that house when I was 12. I still experience paranormal things, but nothing that comes close to what I dealt with in that house. I believe there were a lot of spirits there, and I'd love to know about what happened there previously to cause so much activity. We were a regular church-going family, so I'm sure if there was anything demonic there, that probably pissed it off even more. But I don't know. What do you think it could have been? Ghosts? Demons? Poltergeists? All of the above? What's your story? Back in the 90s, my parents would often move from house to house. Before I was born and they were pregnant with my sister, they moved into a new house complete with a lake in the backyard. It was pretty old, but still comfy. My parents thought it was all fine until some strange things began to happen. For starters, they said that when taking showers, the radio would often switch to random static noises. The lights would flicker and hair dryers would just shut off suddenly. All right, no big deal. Just an old house. Nothing strange at all. Of course, my parents started speculating some strange things were happening after living in it for a few months. One night, they had some friends over. This picture of a little boy was hanging on the wall, overlooking the living room. My parents joked around and talked about how it was evil or something. Just as they did that, all of the lights turned off as if on cue. One night, both of them were sitting in bed, trying to fall asleep. My mom told me that while sleeping, this weird blowing noise blew right in her ear. She said something like, stop doing that, thinking that it was my dad. He said, I'm not doing anything. They both felt this weird blowing noise in their ear, like right next to their ears. I would honestly be terrified too, then, finally, after having crazy and terrifying experiences, the last thing that happened was their breaking point. When getting home with groceries, the magnets on the fridge were strangely arranged differently than they had been before. Not only that, but while getting all of the bags out of the car, my mom swore that she saw a shadow flash by in the living room. My dad looked over and said that he saw it too. They both called the police thinking it was an intruder, but when the police arrived, they couldn't find anything. They ended up living there only six months. That was the last straw. When they moved out, there were some rumors going around that supposedly somebody had died in that lake behind their yard. When they came back to see the house a little while later, it had been condemned. first want to talk about the recent experience I had at my house while I was trying to astral project. I was laying down doing the techniques when I suddenly hear somebody breathing right next to me and my dog. At first I thought it was my dog since sometimes he moves around in his sleep and I think he has nightmares. While I'm hearing the breathing I look at my dog 
but I can hear him breathing and it's a different pattern than the one that was right next to me. My next experience haunts me to this day. I was in bed when my dad and I hear the gate button being pressed. It connects to an iPad. We ran downstairs to investigate since we suspected that it might be the police. We open the app to see that it's a black screen. Peculiar, but it was because of the Wi-Fi. For some extra context, the gate camera will snap a photo of the person who pressed the button to be let in. It took two photos. My dad and I went to the windows to see any lights, but there were none. There was nobody in the photo. The next experiences somewhat relate to each other. This happened when I was walking home from school. I was strolling down my road when I hear someone yell, Hey! I turned to see if it was my neighbor, since we have a few houses on the small patch of road. No one was there. I walked next door to see if anybody was home there, but nobody was. The second thing that happened was I was walking in the forest on my property. I was walking on this little trail when I hear snap. Not like a twig, it sounded like a firm finger snap. We have tenants down in the yard, but how they could snap so close to me when no one was there is beyond me. It had to have been somebody standing right next to me. It wasn't an echo or anything like that, but nobody was there. The last experience has given me a wider sense of the paranormal. I was dragging the lawnmower when I hear an old woman's voice say, Hey! I turn to see nobody there, so I keep dragging it. Then I hear, Stop! It was so loud that I dropped everything and had to look. Nobody was there. I want to be honest, we do have a tenant downstairs, but why would she be yelling at me? I kept dragging the mower, and then I heard mumbling, and then the voice disappeared. What's even creepier is that my neighbor's grandmother lived in this house. When she died, I think he just decided it was better off cutting the property in half, sell one side, my house, and then make his house on the other. So maybe it was her thinking that I was him or not being happy I was in half of her house. In any case, it's definitely been interesting. I bought my first house nine months ago. It's a huge accomplishment for me. On the evening after I closed on the house, I had a little champagne toast in the new place. I invited my boyfriend, my sister, we'll call her Jenna, her four-year-old daughter, we'll call her Mary, my best friend, Aunt T, and my son and brother who live with me. It only lasted an hour or two. I gave everyone the tour, my best friend and Jenna, wanted to stop in every room and talk about my plans for it. I ordered pizza. Like I said, we had a small champagne toast. My niece, Mary, had a great time running through the house. She and my sister have a 700 square foot apartment, so my place seemed huge to her. Mary loved my room. I have a closet in my room with a built-in pedestal kind of thing, so we sat her on it and joked that it could be her room. All in all, it was a good time. Everyone who didn't live there headed out at about the same time, starting with Jenna and Mary. It was a school night after all. Not even five minutes after Jenna and Mary left, my sister calls me, still driving home. She sounds shaken, and I was worried for a second that her car had broken down or she got into an accident, but no. Jenna said that she had asked Mary if she'd had a good time and if she liked Aunt Dee, that's me, and my new place. Mary said, yeah, I had fun with Aunt Dee, Aunt T, and the little girl. My sister said she actually pumped the brakes on the car because her instinct was to stop the car in its tracks. The thing is, there were no other children in the house that night, just Mary. Jenna's not trying to scare Mary, but she wants to know more. So very gently, she asks, Oh, what little girl? Mary says, 
the one that was standing behind Aunt Dee all night. My sister presses her a little more and asks Mary what the little girl looks like. Mary says she has long black hair and she had on a pretty blue dress. My sister asked if the little girl had spoken to her. Mary said no, she was really shy, but they had fun chasing each other through the house and the little girl was sitting in her house, AKA my closet, when we opened the door. Mary hesitated to walk into the closet at first and I didn't know why. Now I know. So apparently I have a little ghost girl in my house. She likes my closet and me. My house was built in 1900, so it does have a long history, but I haven't looked into it yet. I haven't heard or seen a thing in this house since I moved in, but I did not sleep well for the first few nights. The ghetto where I'm from is divided by a golf course. One side of the street is project housing and the other side is nicer homes built in the 30s to 90s before the projects were there. I lived in a 1934 two bedroom house, bright yellow tile. I was 26 and I lived with my girlfriend who was 24. After living there a few months, my girlfriend started saying she felt uneasy in the hallway which was very small and had a crawl space in the ceiling. I brought my dad over to get up there and take a look because, you know, could be something scary up there. He found nothing except insulation. A while later, I took a nap for about two hours. My girlfriend was in the next room folding laundry after work. She comes to wake me up, shaking my shoulder. She asks how long I'd been asleep. I said a couple of hours. She said, so you didn't just walk through the house? I said, no. She said, but I just saw you walk through the hallway. I asked if she was sure and she said, yes. I told her it wasn't me and there's no one else in the house. Fast forward a year. I'm trying to quit smoking and I lost my vape. My buddy had been staying at my house for a couple of weeks and he's helping me look for my vape. I walk out to the car and I get in the driver's seat. I'm digging between the seat and the gear shift and suddenly something or someone is talking into my ear, not whispering, speaking right into my left ear. There's that SOB right there, it says. I'm frozen. It's the dead of night. Nobody is around. My buddy is still inside. After about a minute of complete silence, I finally open the car door and go back inside. I tell him what just happened. That's when he goes, huh, probably the same person that calls my name at night. What? He'd been hearing somebody say his name from behind him on the couch he slept on at night ever since he started staying with me. I'm creeped out, but not enough to move. The rent was great and I was not easily shaken. Fast forward a few months, my mom comes over to pick me up and to go shopping. I throw on a shirt in front of the hallway and say, hey, how does this look for today? My mom turned around and her eyes go over my head. She starts to back up and tries to adjust her eyes. I said, what? She said that a black shadow had just gone up the wall behind me into the room behind me. I thought, oh, so now there's that. Fast forward a few months more and I'm watching TV in the living room with my buddy. We hear a loud bang. We go into the kitchen and all the cabinets are open. A single jar of Nutella is on the floor and a huge hole has been punched in the wall beside the refrigerator. Interesting, but I'm still not leaving. Fast forward a few more months. My buddy moved out my girlfriend and I broke up and she moved. I was living there alone for the first time. I go to lay down one night. My bed was freshly made, so the covers were tight. I cut the light and laid my head back. Suddenly there's pressure on either side of my feet, like someone has one hand beside each side of my foot and is pressing down as if you're looking over top of me. 
It lasted all of 30 seconds before I sat up and turned the light back on. Nothing there. Still not moving. Fast forward. I get a new girlfriend. She starts staying over. She says she sees faces in the mirror in the hallway. I'm like, yeah, weird things happen here. Nothing has ever tried to harm me, so I stay. This goes on for a couple of months, until one day I come home to my girlfriend on the porch. It's dark. She says she will not go back in that house while I'm gone. She convinces me to move. I'm in love. I want her to be comfortable. So we're in our new house and I'm on my laptop, going through old photos and videos that I took at the old house. I find videos of myself being recorded from my laptop, but I'm not pressing record. It was videos of me watching TV, working out, leaving my bedroom and walking through the house. It stops all on its own. All of the videos were about a minute or so long. I went to the courthouse and found records where the owner and also the town sheriff had died there of old age. And the community seems to believe that there was some kind of brothel there at some point, due to a red light on the porch. I'm sure that was just a rumor. One of the neighbors said someone had shot themselves in the house, but I couldn't find a record of that either. I wish I could go on about other instances at the old haunted house, but I've gone on long enough. It was 2009 to 2013, rent was 625, and honestly, I wish I had never left. I grew up in a haunted house through my childhood years and when I was a young adult. Sometimes I wonder if it was real or just in my head, but I wanted to talk about it. Heads up, there is some mention of animal death in this story, so if that's not your thing, maybe don't listen to or read it. Anyway, when I was a very young child, I lived in a very old house. I think the house was originally built in the early 1900s. It was originally a doctor's office and home. Right next door was the town's hospital. The house was originally a one-story, one-bedroom, one-bath house and was later turned into a three-bedroom, one-bath, one-story house in 1960. I live in fear in that house. All you felt living in that house was fear and nothing else. I would either look down at the floor or close my eyes if I had to get up and walk to the bathroom. I always felt watched, and sometimes when I walked into the kitchen to get to the bathroom, something invisible would come up and hit me, or my body, or I'd be checked to the side. It would also happen if you stood at the kitchen sink. Something invisible would come from nowhere and body check you to the side. Then we had our dad's old non-battery operated plug-in radio that would turn itself on all the time. Even when it wasn't plugged in, it would still go on, all on its own. It did for years, and we just got used to it. But then we had a social worker therapist lady come for a visit. We came and sat down at the kitchen table to talk about the radio turning on with the lady there. I tried to do my best to ignore it, but I couldn't, and I had to explain to the lady what happened. She was actually okay with it. Apparently, it wasn't her first time with the paranormal, so that was cool. Years go by, and I'm home alone taking a bath. Out of the blue, the front door opened and slammed shut, and I could hear somebody stomping all the way through the house and into the kitchen, and then stop. I got out of the tub quickly, covered myself with a towel, and then threw the bathroom door open. No one was there. I was still home alone. You can't break into my dad's house. My dad put in key entry only locks and hard bar grids over the outside of the windows. The living room windows were triple paned and the bedroom windows were double paned. That house was like Fort Knox. Again, a few years later, my big sister lost her keys one day. She always put them in the same spot every day, but that one day when she went to get them, they just weren't there. We searched everywhere for the keys, and when we finally stopped looking, 
The keys showed back up in the same spot they should have been in to begin with. The second time they disappeared, they were found outside on the ground in the drive. It was outside the fence. There was no reason for them to be there. The third time the keys went missing, they weren't found until many years later, inside the compartment in the dashboard area below the radio of the car. She didn't find them, but the car dealership that she took the car into to trade it in found them. That was pretty creepy. The house, or the negative thing in the house, turned Dad into a very negative person. He went from an awesome dad to a very abusive dad over the years. I took the brunt of that abuse because I was the youngest and the most sensitive to the paranormal. He never abused my big sister, just me. The negative thing in the house also grabbed dad and body checked him a few times, but he kept that to himself for years until we no longer lived there. One time when I was home alone in the house, I was standing in front of the kitchen but kind of standing sideways because the kitchen stove was next to the sink. Something in the living room in front of the pellet caught my attention and when I turned to look, I saw this mist or fog come up through the floor in front of the pellet stove and start moving toward the first bedroom. That was mine and my sister's bedroom and then it just disappeared in front of me. Oh, and this is the best one. When I came back home for a little bit when I was a young adult, my sister and I had a bed together for a few nights. But one night in bed, my sister in her sleep just sits in my bed right next to me. As soon as she laid down next to me, a very bright young man came up through the bed on my sister's side of the bed, leaned over her and grabbed my right leg below my knee. I wasn't asleep at all, and I was just laying there wide awake. I couldn't sleep because at that time, I was pregnant with my first son. But yeah, I could see the outline of this young man. He looked like a high school quarterback, slim, tall, biceps. He lit up the room, he was that bright. After he disappeared, I looked at the radio clock in our room. The time was 3.47 in the morning. We also had something in the house kill two of our cats with antifreeze. Someone opened a brand new bottle and dumped it in the corner of the house. Nobody was home when it happened. You needed a key to get into that house. One cat died right away, the other two weeks later. It was slowly killing two more of our cats. We could never keep pets in the home. They all started to die shortly coming back home. Years later, dad and sister moved out and he rented it to a friend from work. We had a six foot tall, large dog kennel in the back. The guy put his bulldog inside and chained him in the kennel. Then he locked it up and left for a few hours. Later, he found his dog hanging on the opposite side of the gate by its chain. Obviously, he was dead. That's never happened before and we had two dogs in that thing before and they were even bigger than the bulldog. We were all completely shocked when that happened. Even the work friend became a very negative person after moving into that house. To this day, I want nothing to do with that place. It now sits completely abandoned. Dad can't sell it, which honestly is probably for the best. It's not safe for anyone to live in. I was 13, soon to be 14, when I moved into this house. I was always very connected to the spiritual world because my mom was a very strong believer, and I was very curious about this topic. Everything was quite normal when we moved in, even though I had a weird feeling about a corner in my parents' room. That corner gave me a feeling of fear. Whenever I came into my parents' room, I got this unwelcoming feeling and an urge to leave, but I didn't think too much of it until I started to feel like I was being watched whenever I was home alone. The first time I really thought about the house being haunted was when my mom told me that for a second she had felt like time stopped and she heard a male voice asking for help. At first I thought she was just trying to scare me, 
but she was genuinely very concerned about it. Even though that was pretty scary, my mom and I decided not to pay attention. We thought that if we just ignored it, it would stop and go away. A few months passed and nothing happened, at least nothing like what my mom had experienced. I still felt like I was being watched and I just couldn't stay in my parents' room. But the energy was really off. I was really depressed and my mom and dad started to fight a lot. My mom and I started to fight too. My mom was also feeling depressed and our life just took a downhill turn since we moved. Everything got worse when one of my cats died. After my little buddy died, I started to feel the strong smell of cigarettes and men's perfume and a masculine energy around the house. It wasn't the perfume or cologne that my dad used. My mom came to me asking if I had started smoking, and I said no, of course not, but that I had smelled the same smells as well. Then my mom told me that she had started to have these weird dreams about a man. I have to admit that while I felt very afraid of what was going on, I also felt this weird excitement to know more and I started to do more research about paranormal activity. Now I don't know if that triggered it to get worse or not, but boy did it. I was now constantly feeling observed and oppressed. Then, one afternoon when I was home alone, I was talking to my friend on the phone when I suddenly heard a loud noise coming from the front door. My dog started barking like crazy, and I immediately thought that somebody was trying to break in. I slowly went there to see what was going on, and I quickly discovered that there was nobody outside. I really started to freak out. I went back into the living room and continued to talk to my friend to calm down. I hear another loud noise. The door of my parents' room had just closed itself. I opened it to see if the window was open, trying to find an excuse for what had just happened, but the window was closed. At this point, I was losing it, when my mom got home, I told her what had happened. She told me to just ignore it, that if there was something in the house, it was just trying to scare me, and that if it was bad, it would feed on my fear. I thought that what she said was just a little too Hollywood, honestly, but I still followed her advice and played it cool. A little bit after that, on another afternoon, I fell asleep on the couch. I woke up with a loud, A in my ear. It was the voice of my mom, and I swear to this day I can still hear the voice of my mom in my head, crystal clear. I even thought that my mom was already at the house, but it turned out there was no one there. Then another cat died. Two years at the house and two of my cats had died. If I'm being honest, all I could think about was how in horror movies the pets always die. I was terrified of the house. I avoided it at all costs, and I didn't like to be home alone. I just couldn't handle the fear at this point. I constantly felt watched. I couldn't even go to the bathroom at night. It's like I wasn't even living in my house. I just felt extremely unwelcomed there. Then my mom started to have dreams about all of us being dead, and we always died in the worst types of ways. I was also having very vivid dreams. Some of them I remember clearly to this day. My mom then decided to do a cleansing to the house and everything calmed down for a while. Then my mom told me that when she was trying to put my little sister to sleep, she made a gesture like she was offering her pacifier to someone. And when she asked her, she told her she was offering it to the lady. My mom completely froze and didn't say anything. I wasn't sure what to think anymore. And by now, those things just started to feel really normal. I was scared, but curious, and I wanted to see something, not just hear it or feel it. Through the whole time that this was going on, I felt excited to see something. Even though I wasn't sure how I would react, I still wanted it. Well, that day came when I was trying to sleep in my room. Everything was dark, and I was facing the ceiling just whispering the lyrics of a song to try to get to sleep. I wasn't thinking about anything paranormal. And the funny thing is, in the moment when things were happening, I was never even thinking about the paranormal as a cause either. But I saw this light come from the corner of my room. 
I quickly looked and faced it, and I felt it looking back. Even though it was just a light, I could feel some kind of presence in it. When I processed what it was, I gasped, and it moved fast to the left, then to the right, then disappeared. When I tell this, it seems like it lasted minutes, but the truth is it only lasted for a couple of seconds. It was super fast. I can't really explain what I saw. It was like a lantern, but alive. I don't really know. It was white, and unlike the other things that happened, this one actually didn't make me feel scared. I did a little Google search after that, and I found out that what I had seen is typically called an orb, and the color white meant protection. At this point, I was very confused, but I had this feeling that the thing that I had seen was not the thing that was scaring me. I thought of my uncle who passed away when I was seven. Maybe the orb was him protecting me from whatever was in the house. Maybe not. All I know is that after that, everything calmed down. This was the last event that I can remember, and it happened in the very last year that I lived in the house. Shortly after all this, I moved. But now and then I think about that home. Why could I never go into my parents' room? Who was the man that asked my mom to help and appeared in her dreams? Was it him that made everything smell like cigarettes and cologne? Who was the lady? I never got any answers to these questions. One month after I moved, I had a dream. I was in my bed and I knew I was sleeping, but I could see my room perfectly and I remember thinking that a bad entity was there. Then I saw a very bright light that covered my vision, and I woke up feeling very protected. I think that was the last time that I felt like something was with me, at least at my house where I still live until this day. I have a lot of weird stories that have happened to me, but anyway, I moved to the haunted house when I was almost 14 and left when I was almost 18. And never for a second did I think I was crazy, even though nobody believed me other than my mom. And I get it, it sounds like scary movie stuff. But I hope you'll feel differently and actually believe my story. Because it did happen. And I still really miss my cats. My friends lived a few houses down in an old house they were renting. They often talked about the house being haunted. They said that things would move by themselves or disappear, only to reappear later. They mostly talked about this pair of jeans that was set out when my friend was getting ready for work. When he went to go get them, they were gone. He figured he must have forgotten and just set them down elsewhere, so he started looking around. He couldn't find them, so he just got a different pair and then went to work. When he came home, they were folded up on the kitchen table. He asked his wife where she had found them. She said she hadn't seen them. They went to the kitchen, and she claims she has no idea how they got there. One time, I walked over to their house, and I was going in the side door. As I reached for the doorknob, I saw it twist and open up, just a few inches. I thought it was them telling me to come in, so I waited for them to say something. After a few seconds, I opened the door and went in. I said hello and waited. Then I went into the house looking for them and calling them. That's when I realized the house was empty and they weren't home. I got this really funny feeling, and then I started to leave. And that's when I heard a baby crying in their bedroom. I thought, what in the world is going on? But I walked into the bedroom and the crying stopped and there was no baby. I got out of there as fast as I could. They later told me that that was the kind of stuff they put up with all the time, but they did move shortly after that.
This is a story about a house I lived in a year ago near my IT campus in the west of Ireland, which I believe was haunted. To begin, before living there, I was always pretty skeptical of haunted houses, and for good reason. As a teenager, we would often visit haunted houses in our locality, which never proved to be so, at least while we were present there. A few days after moving into our new college house for our final year of college, my friends and I went out to do some shopping and get food. Upon arriving back, we noticed that someone had left the oven on. We each denied it, but we knew that someone had to have left it on because it was on. Looking back, this was probably the first unexplained incident, as thinking about it, nobody even had food to put in the oven. Over the following few weeks, we started to notice odd things happening. Creaks, groans, and movements from out the corner of our eyes. At this point, two of the housemates were convinced of a haunting. However, myself and another were still not so convinced. It was soon only me that was left unconvinced, as one day while the other non-believer was home doing study, they looked up to see a face peering at them before vanishing. It finally clicked for me when I woke up one night just before Christmas to see a very large man, or what I believed to be a man, staring at me from my wardrobe. Then things started to get really strange. Boot prints started to appear on the ceiling, making tracks across the roof by the year's end. And one of my friend's girlfriends swore she saw him upstairs in the room when he'd been downstairs with me all along. Our shower, for which there are three switches that you need to turn it on, would come on in the middle of the night. And one room off the kitchen would send shivers down our spines any time we went in there. There was one night in particular which really scared me. I always locked my door before going to bed, and I distinctly remember doing this that night. When I awoke in the night, I could see the large man again, this time at the end of my bed. I shut my eyes telling myself it was just a dream and went back to sleep. The next morning, my door was wide open and so were all the doors in my wardrobe and the guys had told me it sounded like I was dragging my school bag from one end of the room to the other all night. So many other things happened in that house, but this has gone on long enough. I just decided to tell this story after telling a Galway person about living in the estate without saying which house I lived in, and he told me of a creepy haunted house at the back of the estate, which a family he knew had moved out of a few years prior. When I told him what number it was, and how I knew, he almost fell out of his chair. At least I know I'm not alone. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. We all got out of the house unscathed, but it really made believers out of all of us. When I was in my late teens, early 20s, my dad moved into an old house, one of the oldest left standing in my town. Our town has a rich history with battles and rebellions. Through some research, I figured it was built for an earl back in the day. The house was split into two apartments. When he first moved in, I didn't experience a whole lot, just an overall feeling of strangeness. There was a staircase that led to a solid wall, hollow walls with no doors going into them, certain rooms that were just freezing cold, it just always felt as if somebody was watching. After a few months, I experienced the first thing, what I thought was sleep paralysis. I had fallen asleep on the sofa watching TV. I woke up to feel somebody breathing on my cheek. I could clearly hear the breaths right next to me, and I was frozen. After what felt like an hour, I managed to move, and at that exact moment, a distorted face came flying out of the corner toward me before disappearing. Maybe a month after this, I woke up in bed and I could hear footsteps on the balcony outside my bedroom. I thought maybe somebody was trying to break in. It went on for maybe 10 minutes. I didn't investigate, but the next morning I asked my dad if he had heard anything, but he hadn't. 
We went outside to see if anything was disturbed, and there was a huge handprint, bigger than either of our hands, on the condensation on the balcony door. I freaked out, but my dad played it down. He's a massive skeptic. The next night, he heard somebody on his balcony and ran out to see who it was. As soon as he got outside, all of our bins under the balcony were fallen over, but no one was to be seen. Another day, I was in my bedroom. I had a guitar in the corner, and out of the blue, it made a noise, as if somebody had strummed the strings. There weren't any windows open, and it wasn't just a breeze or something. I ran, but my dad again tried to explain it away. The next day, he was in my room putting away clothes or something, and it happened again. He ignored it, and it happened again. He said something along the lines of, F off, I don't believe in ghosts. And he said that it sounded as if somebody hit the guitar. There was a bang and it fell over onto the floor. This was the first time he genuinely couldn't explain away what had happened. I think it actually rattled him a bit. A few weeks later, I got home from work at approximately 4 a.m. Nobody was home. I walked in, turned the three living room lights on and the TV, and turned the hall light on and went into the bathroom. I come back out and looked up from my phone, and all the lights in the living room were off, and the TV. But the hall and bathroom light were still on. I instantly started texting my friend to come get me, when boom, all the lights turned back on, and the TV too, at top volume. I put it down to some electrical issue. I was naturally scared, but I tried to rationalize. Again, I fell asleep on the sofa, and I woke up to the door handle of the sitting room door, slowly turning. It was loud since it was an old house, and I got out of there. It took me a while to go back to the house after that. When I eventually did, I brought a friend to stay the night. We were sitting in the living room, and the neighbor in the other apartment came onto our landing, just outside the door, and started screaming, like full belt, high-pitched screaming, then just started loudly pacing back and forth on the landing, talking and chanting to himself. We couldn't figure out what he was saying, but it was absolutely terrifying. From speaking to my dad afterwards, he said that the neighbor had just started doing this one night a week or so prior, every single night. Numerous other events have happened. My dad's CD player turning itself on, leaving a room to come back and seeing a door that had been closed was now open, things going missing and appearing somewhere else, weird sounds at night. My dad has since moved from there, but everybody that I've talked to that has been in that house has mentioned that they just feel uneasy there, that there was something else there. I don't know, maybe it's all in my head, but I think something legitimate was happening in that house. My story is from when I was growing up at my parents' house in Burton, Michigan. Since I was about seven or eight, all the way up until I moved out, I witnessed several odd occurrences. My dad was an over-the-road truck driver, so I was home with my mom most of the time. Weird things that have happened include tapping on the walls, voices, being touched, feeling like you're being watched, and even a full-on person that disappeared in front of me. There have been several instances where I, and my friends who I have never told this to, have heard chunks of conversation coming from other rooms or downstairs. When I went to investigate, it would immediately stop. I was home alone, the TV was off, and the windows were closed. There have been a few other events, such as tapping on walls, doors shutting, and very clear footsteps walking along the hardwood floors. Once, they even went past me so close that I could feel it in the floorboards. The creepiest thing was one day a friend and I were down in the basement. 
which consisted of a large family room, a laundry room, and my dad's workout room. The door to the workout room did not have a doorknob since they were refinishing the house. There was only a hole in the door for one. I don't remember why, but my friend and I looked through the hole and clearly saw a man sitting on a weight bench. She thought it was my dad. We didn't think anything of it until shortly after at dinner when I asked my dad why he wasn't at the table. I then learned that he was a few states away out on the road still. I had thought he came home. I told my mom and she immediately called the police thinking that there should have been someone in the house. She said she heard commotion in that room earlier in the day but she thought it was us. There was no sign of anyone being in there. Another creepy thing happened in the basement. Some friends and I were in the family room playing Nintendo 64 and clear as day a man walked right past the double sliding laundry room doors. The room is like 30 by 8 and has a set of the bifold closet doors as an entrance. Almost all of my friends saw this. The man walked past and right before he was out of sight, turned toward the wall and made a motion like he was opening a refrigerator door and putting something in. He then walked out of sight. We went in there to see who the hell it was and there was nobody there. I have been living on the other side of the state for three years, but my mom still lives there and is most of the time alone with the dog since my dad is still on the road a lot. She says that she still hears the conversations and the footsteps quite often and has seen the guy in the basement twice. I'm skeptical, but honestly I don't know what to make of it. There have been multiple witnesses and I've tried to debunk everything, but I just don't know how to explain it. I would like to share a personal experience that I had in my childhood home in the early 90s when I was six years old. This isn't the first experience and it definitely wasn't the last, but it's the only time that I ever truly saw her. A quick backstory, the house is a brick colonial, built by one of the very first families to settle outside of Philadelphia. They were a very affluent family who owned a large portion of land in the area and worked in the city. The house was lived in by their descendants well into the early 1900s, so, as you can imagine, a lot of history, births, deaths, and such were going on within those walls. As a child, I suffered from nightmares, a lot of them. It was commonplace for me to wake up in the middle of the night, jarred awake by some terrifying dream and this time it was no different. On this particular night, I had awoken from a scary dream, and in order to calm myself down, I laid quietly in my bed and scanned the dark corners of my bedroom for some unknown threat. I have no idea what I expected to find, but I definitely remember the feeling of what could be hiding here in the shadows. As I looked around, nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary at first, but then all of a sudden, there she was, standing in my doorway, staring directly at me. Her face was emotionless. She was very beautiful, with shoulder-length brown hair that had large waves toward the bottom, and she was wearing a long white nightgown. Forgive me for the cliché, but that's what she was wearing. I stared at her in shock and confusion, and she just stared back. I didn't understand what was happening, but what I did know was that there was a woman in my house in the middle of the night that I didn't recognize, and she was looking directly into my eyes. She was clear as day, as if somebody was just standing there, watching over their child as they slept. The wheels in my head were turning, and all I could come up with was, this person should not be here. The next thing I remember doing was throwing the covers over my head, as you do, with my heart racing and thinking over and over, please go away, please go away. I have no idea how long I hid under the covers, but when I emerged, she was gone. From what my mother tells me, I didn't tell her right away what had happened. I think she said that I told her a couple of days later that I saw a woman in the house. 
From that point onwards, even to this day, when I visit my parents, who still live there, you had better bet that that door is shut. Friends ask me how on earth I could live there. The way I see it, her presence has never been malicious, and she lived there first, so it's just as much her house as it is mine if she chooses to stay. She does seem to have a sense of humor, though. I thought about saving that story for a different day, but it does directly correlate to the original, so I will add it here. Fast forward to last summer. I was back home for a short time helping to run the family business, which is also on the same property but in a separate building. The topic of hauntings came up with one of the employees that I had grown close with. I told her that we have a resident ghost in the family home, and told her the story that I just told you. She jokingly said to remind her never to come to visit. I reassured her that it wasn't that bad, and that I personally hadn't experienced anything recently when I visit. I even made a joke that perhaps she had moved out. We laughed, and that was the end of it. Or so I thought. That very same evening, I came downstairs to ask my mother something, and found that I was alone in the house. The property is pretty large, so it's not uncommon to be around and not know where somebody is. I went into the kitchen and found some almonds to snack on. Just then, I felt like someone was in the house with me. I figured it was my mom coming back, and I checked around the corner, but there was no one there. I called out to her and received no response. It was strange, but I shrugged it off and went back to snacking. I had my back to the entrance to the kitchen, and I was just sort of standing there staring out the kitchen window and daydreaming. That is when I felt it. Someone poked me on the back of my arm. It was a playful poke, the kind you do when you sneak up behind someone and tap them to get their attention. In the time it took me to turn to see who was there, I remember wondering who it could possibly be. My parents really are not the type to sneak up behind you and poke you. It was no one. No one was there. I fully expected someone to be standing there, so when there wasn't, I was so taken aback that I let out a startled yell. I power walked straight for the front door and left the house. The feeling I had was like reality slapped me in the face. I'm completely convinced that it was her giving me a playful nudge, saying, I didn't move out guess who's still here? That really freaked me out. I can handle little things here and there, but being physically touched? No thank you. Anyway, that's all. I just wanted to share my story. A few weeks ago, I was talking to my mom. It was a Monday night, and she looked pretty tired. So I asked her what was up. She told me that the night before, at about five in the morning, she was woken by the sensation of being watched. She had her back to the wall, but she felt as though someone was behind her, laying in the bed with her. She felt a cold chill and was paralyzed with fear. After a few minutes, she finally convinced herself to look. Of course, there was nothing there, but it took her quite a while to fall back asleep. The funny thing is, at the same time in my room in the basement, which is nowhere near her, so her moving would not have woken me up, I was awoken by a sound, so I sat up to look, and there was a man standing at the end of my bed. Of course, it scared me so much, Within a second, I flung my covers off to sit up, but he was gone. There's a chair at the end of my bed, with no space to stand, and he couldn't have been that tall while sitting. We were both spooked. Today, I was sitting alone in my basement working on homework, and someone ran their fingers through my hair. I'm pretty sure our house is haunted. So this happened around seven years ago, in 2012 or 2013. I started high school, and the place I attended was in a different city from my hometown, so I stayed in the school's dorm. 
The place was on the outskirts of the city. It was a large area with two school buildings, two separated PE buildings, a study hall, a kitchen and cafeteria, and the dorm. It was a custom for freshmen to stay in the big bedrooms, the ones that could host up to 12 people. In the room that I was staying in, there were only seven girls, including me, throughout the whole year. Seven is a bad number in my country, similar to how some people don't like 13. Through the school year, we experienced really weird things happening. Every month, we gathered a handful of screws that weren't missing from anywhere. We found weird candy wrappings, old style ones that nobody had had in the room. Once, three of us had to go home during the week because all of us had had some sort of accident. One time, our lock broke, which locked half of the group out and the other half in. The room was separated into three sections, and all three had double windows. One time, the middle inside window broke during the day, and there were just a lot of other small things that happened. We usually joked about them, even though we were all a bit uneasy, because they were happening so often. And because they were so frequent, we just shrugged them off. Then, the scariest thing happened. It was March 13th. I remember this vividly because we have a national holiday on the 15th and that meant a long weekend. One of my roommates was a sleep talker and she usually fell asleep before everyone. We had a habit of making fun of her a bit because it was always gibberish to us. Well, not that night. She fell asleep pretty early and talked about her boyfriend in her sleep. We silently laughed at her and after a while the others went to bed. Three other girls and I were sleeping in the last section, far from the door. We pushed together three beds and slept cuddled up most of the night. I was sleeping on one end of the beds, and the sleep-talking girl, Henriette, on the other end. There were two other girls between us, Yvette and Ata. I almost fell asleep when Ata let out a small scream next to me. I quickly sat up, and saw that Henny was pulling Yvette's ponytail and was choking her. We quickly get her hands off of Yvette and cuddled up on the bed, trying to stay away from her while calling her name, hoping that she would wake, but she didn't. Then she started to talk to us about, quote, the people who were locked up in the attic. She was talking about how they were free now and they were getting closer. She told us that these people would kill us all. By that time, everyone in the room was freaking out. The girls in front kept telling her to cut it out, but the people in the back, where I was, we feared for our lives. I'm not a religious person anymore, but I was back then. So at one point, I started to quietly pray, hugging the two sobbing girls. I didn't even say two lines when Henny said in a menacing voice, Don't pray. That won't help you. One of the girls in the front screamed and turned the light on. It took us five minutes at least to wake up Henny, and when she woke up, she seemed terrified and started to cry and kept asking us what had happened. I left that school at the end of the school year, but that night still haunts me. I grew up in several haunted houses. Even now, we have an entity in our kitchen who we jokingly call the fridge ghost, as it likes to hang out by the fridge and occasionally open it in the middle of the night. But for now, I'm going to talk about a house I lived in until middle school. It's located on a street called Cherry, which my friends and I always joked about for obvious reasons. However, nothing about the feeling I had when I lived in that house with my family was anything to joke about. My friends never wanted to spend the night at the house I grew up in. All of them had the same bad feeling staying there. This sinking feeling that formed in the pit of their stomachs before something would happen. And unusual things inevitably would, more often than not. Doors would regularly open and close on their own, 
This was something that I had chalked up to the tilt in the foundation, at least at first. But when you hear your doors, cabinets, doors leading to the house, essentially anything with a hinge, slam in the middle of the night, you start to question if it's just regular house noises. The windows would open and shut on their own as well, which is a little harder to pin on a shifting foundation. There were a couple of times that the televisions would turn on and off on their own. Sometimes the volume on the TV sets would go up and down as well. And there were other times the channels would show up on the television sets that I've never seen. I could probably blame the odd television behavior on magnetism or the fact that both television sets were quite old. However, the strange things I would see on those off channels through the static are enough to convince me that there might have been something else going on there. I would often hear noises in the vents, like things were crawling around in them. Sometimes it sounded like bodies were being dragged through the ventilation shafts. Sometimes I would hear scratching on the walls or the windows or other out of the ordinary sounds like footsteps on the floor when no one else was there. My mom used to tell me that it was little woodland creatures who got into the insides of the walls, but I never saw these animals. The closest I came to seeing anything close to that was one family of skunks we found living under our porch. But after moving them out safely to the woods, we never saw any other animals that could account for making the types of noises I was hearing. Sometimes I heard whispering, and other times I heard yelling, like a faint cry through the walls. There were other times I would find weird yellow liquid on the walls or other similar substances. My mom used to tell me it was mold and not to touch it until she could clean it. But it didn't look like any mold I've ever seen. It didn't look like any of those substances could be made by anything living. I would also see ghostly figures wandering through the house. When I was young, I used to talk in great detail with what I think was a child female entity it was more like a one-way conversation with the entity, although sometimes it would answer in its own way. I wrote an essay about my friendship with that ghost for one of my classes later on and submitted it as fiction so the teacher wouldn't think I was crazy. But the truth is that my friendship with that ghost and some of the other presences was very real. Of course, there was the typical haunting stuff too, objects being thrown, pulled, or just simply going missing altogether. I used to joke with my mom that the wall trolls or house gnomes had made off with our stuff, to which she would just roll her eyes. When my mom started seeing some strange entities peering at us through the windows or as we were sleeping, she started to take my stories a little more seriously. She won't agree with everything I have claimed to see in that house, but she will definitely admit that there were presences that would appear. I often saw toys come to life, including a doll my aunt had brought me back from Russia. I had a dream that the doll was trying to kill me by choking me to death. When I woke up, the doll was sleeping next to me in my bed. No one had ever moved it there that night. I ended up blessing the doll and throwing it away. To this day I don't like dolls and I won't sleep in the same room with one. I remember that the landlord who lived in the house next door was always asking us how things were going there. My mom told me to keep quiet about the things we saw because the rent was cheap and she didn't want to upset her. But even though I never got any direct answers from the landlord, I could see by her behavior that she must have known something was off with the house. Perhaps the strangest thing was that the house didn't particularly have a dark past or a history attached that would make it stand out as a hub for spiritual activity. The landlord was cranky and her attitude could have contributed to the overall negative energy. But other than that, we never knew what in particular made the house so haunted. I didn't exclusively see evil entities in the house either. Like I said, I made some friendships with the ghosts. And I even saw other entities, what I can only describe to be little people and entities that looked like what people say greys are but they weren't aliens. This leads me to believe that the house was built on top of some kind of ley line or portal that opened up into other realms. Maybe instead of a haunted house, we just had a house with the gateway. I'm not sorry that I had the experiences that I did, 
In fact, I think it broadened my horizons and showed me from an early age that there's more to the world than what we can physically see. I will always think of the friendships I formed with the spirits and other entities fondly. For some people, my experience might have a rational explanation, and that's fine. I've always had an open mind, and I'm happy to listen to many sides of an argument. But for me, the experiences I had in this house growing up were tangible, and not just the imagination of an elementary school kid. They are something that has colored my view of this beautiful and mysterious world, and has opened my eyes to all kinds of realms of possibility. My girlfriend landed a gig where she has to watch this eight-year-old, and she decided to bring me along as well. When we got there, the mother was running late, so we sat in the living room and talked to the kids. The little girl that we were babysitting, and also the teenage daughter, were in there. So as the conversation naturally runs its course, the little girl mentions the ghosts that she's seen, and met, and even felt. I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky sort of dude, so I edged along the topic of these ghosts, to which the little one happily obliged. However, I noticed that the older sister started to get a little nervous or anxious, and tried to talk over her younger sister. This intrigued me. The girl went on to describe all the ones that she has seen and felt, explaining that there are good ones and bad ones. So whatever, right? Just a silly kid's imagination running wild at night. Apparently they had already had somebody come in and cleanse the house though, meaning that it was a reality for the family after all. On a final note, the little girl also mentioned that she thinks they missed one. The cherry on top is that the most active room in the house was right beside where we were sleeping in the basement. Fast forward to the nighttime and when we were trying to fall asleep, my girlfriend and I started to feel a bit nervous, and that feeling kept multiplying until I started conversing in my own mind with whatever was in the room with us. As I finished my sentence, saying something like, I know you're here, I felt ice-cold chills run from my left side to my right side, and as they took over my body, I stood up and said, hello, right to my girlfriend. Safe to say we spent the rest of the night upstairs, I don't know if it was just nerves or my mind playing tricks, but it was definitely weird. I've had some crazy things happen to me at my house. My neighborhood sits on top of a Native American burial ground. There are even some ruins and a burial mound in my friend's backyard, literally. Also, there was a Revolutionary War battle about a mile down the street. Fun stuff, right? Ever since I moved into that house with my parents about 13 years ago, I was four. My little brother was around one. Now I'm 17 and he's 14. A lot has happened. My brother, who was six at the time of the story, used to run around the house claiming to be chased by a monster. My mom and I were sitting on the couch one day and he was standing in front of the TV, but then he started shaking and ran to my mom and sat on her lap. He said that a lady tapped him on the shoulder and asked if she could speak with his father. You could bet my mom picked up both of us like footballs, got in the car as fast as possible and went to my grandma's. For the longest time after that though, things had been quiet something happened, it was very minor. Within the last five years, however, things have really kicked up again. For example, once I was standing in the kitchen at around age 13, I was staring out the window and I heard my name whispered in my ear really softly. I remember saying, yeah mom, only to look and see her fast asleep on the couch in the next room. Another time at around three in the afternoon, while I was home alone with my brother who was napping upstairs, I heard a knock on the door and a couple of kids giggle pretty loudly. I answered the door right away, 
too fast for them to have run off, but no one was there. My mom heard a loud crash once and a little kid giggle while in the living room. She ran into the kitchen to call my dad and tell him about it. While she was in the kitchen, the garbage can lid started swinging. My dad, who's never experienced anything paranormal until last month, was working in the garage. The cap that keeps the air inside of a bike was thrown at him from across the room. I don't know why all of a sudden these things just started happening, out of nowhere after all these years of silence. My mom runs around the house with holy water after every experience because she's scared that it's going to hurt someone. I kind of doubt that. It's never hurt anybody before. It's only given us inconveniences and scared us, but I guess anything is possible. Does anyone have any explanation? So a few months back, I moved into this beautiful two-story house with my mother, and we had a roommate with two kids in a great neighborhood. The price was suspiciously cheap, but at the time, we didn't think twice about the price. Anyway, the first night was a little creepy. I thought I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. My mom was close to the stairs on the second floor, so I always heard who comes up and down, but... I just dismissed it, thinking it was just the house settling, as they say. Plus, I thought to myself, people always get a creepy vibe the first night they move into a new place, right? So after a few tosses and turns, I eventually fell asleep. Now this was the first night, and the next encounter didn't happen for a few weeks, but this definitely got everyone in the house spooked. That night after work, I came home, happy that I had the next day off. So as soon as I got home, I got ready to play a game. As I sat down, I felt this presence in the room. But it was only me, and it literally felt like something evil was looking directly at me. I felt drained, but at the time, I didn't think much of it. Looking back on it now, it was almost like something was stealing my energy or feeding off of it. But as normal, I dismissed it and went to go ask my roommate if she wanted to smoke, and she said yes. So we went outside, and we were talking for a good bit. But out of nowhere, she brought up how she felt about the house. Then she told me what happened to her earlier that day. She told me that when she came outside to smoke as she was sitting on the stairs, which is where we always smoked, she happened to turn, and she saw the blinds from our living room open. She saw a figure looking directly at her, but when she turned to get a better look, it vanished. She said she didn't go back into the house for a few hours, but when she did, nothing was there. To me, it seemed like nothing. I honestly thought she was just seeing things. But we both felt like there was always something watching us. This is when things get a little scary. About a week or two passed, and my roommate and I were down in the basement smoking because it was snowing outside. We finished up, and then her two kids wanted to play, so we both stayed downstairs and watched the kids play. We were sitting a good bit away from the stairs when we saw her youngest son look up the stairs. The creepy thing is the way he turned and made it look like somebody had called him. Mind you, we were both looking at him at this time, so when he turns, he then slowly looks up the stairs as if he was trying to make out what he was looking at. As soon as his head stops, I'm assuming that's when he saw whatever it was he saw, and he started crying, like literally bawling. When his mother called his name, he just smiled and ran towards her. From our point of view, we couldn't see up the stairs because there was a wall covering it, but we know he saw something. That's when we knew the house was probably haunted. Since she was home more than I was, and more than my mother was, she had stories about doors being opened that were originally closed. You know, the normal haunting stories. But now we started to believe her even more. My mother said she started to feel depressed whenever she got home. This was the scariest thing that happened to me personally. We were moving, and at first everything was going smoothly. I was packing up the living room, and my mother was packing up her room. 
the roommate had already moved out, so it was just the two of us. After a few minutes of moving, I heard a loud bang. It was as if a bowling ball had fallen off of a countertop. It came from upstairs. So I went to go check it out. Nothing fell. Nothing was on the ground anywhere. My mom and I were pretty spooked, so we left to get some extra boxes and then we came back. When we got back, it was nighttime, and I went upstairs to pack up the kitchen. As I was doing so, I heard this loud, demonic screeching sound. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's true. At the time, I didn't think much of it. In my head, I knew it came from in the area I was in. But when you're in a situation like that, sometimes defenses take over and you just try to brush it off. So I brushed it off. Thought it was just a car from outside that had a bad break or had to break hard. Anything other than what I'd actually heard. I proceeded to pack the kitchen. When I opened the cabinet, I heard the loud bang again. So I looked around, and then I looked back into the cabinet, proceeding to close it and run downstairs. Literally nothing had fallen in that room. I was running downstairs when I heard the screech again, but this time it came from inside the cabinet. I was still close enough to tell. It was almost like I felt a gust of wind blow past my head at that point, and I swear it felt like something went through my forehead. It felt like a punch. It wasn't like a fist punch, but like an energetic punch. It didn't hurt, it was more like a force that went through my body that I could physically feel. I booked it downstairs and told my mom what happened. Needless to say, we moved a lot faster than expected. If anyone has any experience with this stuff, please tell me what really happened to us. I always find it kind of odd ghosts and demons and stuff like that, but maybe they are real. Something clearly was going on at that house. I just wish I knew what it was. As a kid, I was a huge fan of the paranormal, mostly due to my love for movies like Ghostbusters, but never in my life did I think that I would live in an actual haunted house, or in my case, a haunted mobile home. This all started when I was around four years old. We lived in a pretty nice mobile home. Growing up, my aunt would babysit us, as both of my parents worked crazy hours to support our family of five. Before we went to sleep, my aunt had a habit of telling us ghost stories. One night, as my paternal grandmother was visiting from Puerto Rico, my parents moved my twin and I to the living room as my grandmother claimed our room for the night. I was already creeped out about sleeping in the living room, which was pitch black. What made it worse was that they decided to put the cup with my grandmother's dentures next to the sofa. Having a very overactive imagination, I started to scare myself with ideas of what those teeth could do to me in the night. I struggled to go to sleep as my youngest sister, who was about three months old, was getting fussy and not wanting to sleep herself. On what took my mom a while, she finally got my sister to sleep before 10pm. I was relieved, and then I went back to trying to get some sleep myself. As the night progressed, I was sound asleep until I was awoken by the noise. I didn't know what it was at first. And then I realized it was a girl laughing. Scared out of my wits, I hid under the blanket. I heard the laughing get louder and closer. I shook in fear and attempted to look up, but I heard the girl run away from me and start running all over the living room and into my baby sister's room. It was then that I heard my baby sister crying hysterically. I heard the laugh through all of the crying. I just laid on the sofa trembling in fear as I heard both the laughter and the crying. Merged together, it was truly eerie. A few moments later, I heard running, and this time it was my mom getting up to get my sister and take her to the master bedroom on the other side of the trailer. I don't know how I did it, but I did manage to go back to sleep. The following morning, I asked my mom about it, and she told me she was getting that trailer blessed by a priest. A priest did come, and all of the activity stopped, or so we thought. 
After the first incident, I started elementary school. I became a very avid reader, as my now late maternal grandfather had gotten us to start reading at a very young age. I would read books on ghosts every chance I had, which I actually still do. Nearly two years after my first encounter with the ghost, my little brother was born. Everything had been okay, and that's when it started again. Around this time, I wasn't sleeping in the living room, but I could still hear the running from my bedroom. The reason being that the nursery was in the room next to the room that I shared with my twin. I started sleeping with the radio on just so I could avoid hearing that ghost running and laughing. One day I was told to shower as I had gotten pretty dirty from jumping into all the puddles outside. I heard my mom say that she was taking my siblings with her to the store and she'd be right back. The store was just two blocks away, so I figured it would be about 10 to 15 minutes to shower. I was singing in the shower and then I heard that laugh. It scared me as I had only ever heard that laugh at night and when one of my siblings was around. I immediately shut off the water, got a towel and went for the doorknob. I kept trying to open the door but I couldn't, it was jammed. I started crying and the ghost started pounding on the door and laughing at me. It seemed to have gone on for a while until, as suddenly as it started, it stopped. I then heard my mom call my name. She very easily opened the door and saw me on the ground sobbing. I had told her what happened and she yet again called another priest to come and bless the trailer. Nothing happened there after that last blessing since we moved about six months later. I don't know what's going on there now though. The whole experience is a big reason that I usually shower with my door open halfway now. I also recently looked up the history of that neighborhood. As typical as it sounds, it seems that the area where I lived was at one point a makeshift cemetery before our city had an official cemetery. Our trailer had been positioned on top of the grave of a little girl. The whole neighborhood is known for a lot of hauntings. Sometimes I wonder if they removed the bodies or not, but I'll never know as it seems the trailer I lived in was moved and it's now a garden and parking spot for a house that was built on the lot next door. I've had many paranormal experiences, but I thought I'd share this one in particular. My mother-in-law died quite unexpectedly during Christmas in 2013. She was in a coma for about a week before she died. She lived in a senior living community in Southern California called Laguna Woods. While my mother-in-law was in the hospital and following her death, my husband, one-year-old son and I stayed at her place. At the time, we lived in Texas, but were from Southern California, and all of our family are here too. One of my first experiences was in the middle of the night. I picked up my son out of his pack and play because he was crying. I held him as I walked to the living room to sit on the recliner and rock him. I didn't turn on any lights as there was enough ambient light to see. Just as I was about to sit on the recliner, I was startled because it looked like someone was already sitting there. I immediately stood back up because of my natural reaction of thinking somebody was already there. It sure did give my heart a jump. From about then on, I felt a presence. It didn't scare me, but I was definitely aware of it. I don't believe it was my mother-in-law. I believe it may have been a previous owner. I felt that it was probably a woman, but sometimes it felt like a man. So my mother-in-law's death brought together some of my husband's family who had been estranged. My husband's uncle has an adult son with whom they had a falling out for several years. Word of my mother-in-law's passing got to the estranged son, which is a cousin of my husband, and he showed up at the memorial and surprised his family. They had a positive and emotional reunion. He only stayed for the memorial and then left for home. 
After the memorial, my husband's side of the family and I went back to my mother-in-law's house for an after-party visit sort of thing. They stayed for several hours and it was a great reunion. We ordered pizza and I called my sister, who lived in the neighborhood, to come over. She came and socialized and it was nice. Nothing remarkable happened until the next day. So my sister calls me the next day to catch up and see how we're doing and we talk about the previous day and night's events. She commented on how nice it was to see my husband's family and how great it was that my husband's uncle reconciled with his son. She added that it was so nice that the son had come over to the house afterward. I said he didn't come over. He went home immediately after the memorial. My sister said, really? I could swear he was there. I explained that the only men present were my husband, his uncle, and an older cousin. My sister said she saw a man, maybe in his early to late thirties, wearing khaki pants and a sweater vest standing between the living room and kitchen. She said she made eye contact with him a couple of times and he smiled. She said he looked like he was listening and observing the conversations that were going on in the kitchen and living room, but he wasn't talking to anyone. She said her intention was to go and chat with him, thinking that it was the formerly estranged son, but was caught up in conversation with other relatives. She said that when she was finally free to go and chat, she couldn't find him anywhere. She didn't think anything of it at the time, she figured he just left. Since I already had an experience with the recliner sitting person, this made my blood run cold and honestly gave me the chills. Eventually, my husband had to return to Texas to work. My son and I stayed in California for a few weeks to clean out my mother-in-law's house. It was during my stay that more weird things happened. One night, I was lying in bed reading when I felt someone watching me from the hallway. My body had its own reaction to the presence that I couldn't control. I felt anxious, but not scared. Just that I knew someone was in the house besides me and my son was an eerie feeling. I finally made a deal with the ghost or ghosts. I said, listen, I know you're here and that's okay. Just don't scare or harm me or my son. Otherwise, you're welcome to stay. I can't recall the exact timeline, but one morning I found my one-year-old son completely unclothed in his pack and play. He had never ever removed his clothing before this and he's never done it since. Even his diaper was missing. At the time, I thought it was some new phase with him taking off his clothes, but he never did it again. Not even a sock. I truly believe some entity was responsible. It was just too out of his character to take off all of his clothes. Again, I reiterated our commands to the ghosts. You're welcome here, just don't scare or harm me or my son. I had help from my family packing away items that we wanted to keep. During this time, another sister of mine came from the hallway and said that she smelled perfume strongly in the hallway, like Chanel Number no. 5. There were only three of us at the house that day and all of us were working together in the kitchen. No one had been in the hallway other than to pass through to get to the restroom. I smelled the perfume a couple of times too, on different occasions. My mother-in-law had all kinds of aversions and I never knew her to wear perfume, so I didn't think it was her spirit. Also during this packing day, I was packing up her china from the china cabinet and I suddenly got an overwhelming scent of body odor. I even did a pit check of myself and it wasn't me. I did a covert sniff of my sister and friend helping me that day and they didn't smell like it either. I was hesitant to tell them, but then I just had them come over to the china cabinet area and ask if they smelled anything. They both said B.O. and it wasn't any of us. I just chalked it up to another spirit encounter. Another time, I was getting ready to host the estate sale in the house. Everything was prepped and ready for a 7 a.m. start time the next day. As part of the setup, I had my mother-in-law's shoes neatly displayed on a shoe rack in the master bedroom just a few feet from the side of the bed that I was sleeping in. I got up that morning and showered. Nothing was amiss. When I came back into the room, the racked shoes were on the floor next to the bed that I had just woken up from. The rack was still in place properly, it's just that now all of the shoes were on the floor. 
I froze in place when I entered the room and saw the shoes. I was like, what the hell is going on here? There's no way they could have just fallen over by themselves and then been neatly placed there. They had been squarely placed on the rack the night before. I would have had to step over them to get out of bed. Additionally, some of the shoes were far from the rack. Even if they had fallen, there's no way they could have rolled that far. And it wasn't my son because I immediately checked on him and he was still sound asleep in his pack and play in a completely different room. Fast forward to later in the day of the estate sale. Another couple of friends came over to help me. After a busy morning, we had a lull in the afternoon. We tidied up a bit and put things back in place that had been handled by shoppers. We took a break and sat on the porch and chatted while we enjoyed the lull. I recounted to my friends about how I thought the house was haunted. One friend was really spooked when I told her about the perfume. She said that she too smelled it in the hallway earlier that morning. She said that she was walking behind a man in the hallway and she had an overwhelming scent of perfume. She thought it was odd that a man would be wearing such strong women's perfume. I said, well, you've met my ghost. Now for the really freaky stuff. So after I recounted all the incidents above to my friends during our break, I did a walk around of the house just to double check that things were in order for the next round of shoppers. I go into the master bedroom and the frigging shoes are on the floor again. I screamed this time. My friends came running to see what happened. They saw the shoes and they were like, you're messing with us. I said, I swear to God, I'm not messing with you. These shoes were not on the floor before. When we tidied up, I re-racked all of them and the shoes were almost in the same exact position that they had been in that morning when I found them on the floor after my shower. Freaky, man. We eventually sold the house. I asked the realtor if there was a disclosure law for haunted houses. She said she's never heard of such a thing. I told her about how I thought the house was haunted, but she probably just thought I was crazy. Either way, I definitely experienced some paranormal activity there and I would be so curious to find out if the new owners did as well. So my family moved into the house in question in 1999. I was five at the time. The house isn't too old, built in the 70s, and I live in a very small community. So as far as I know, nothing bad ever happened there. Just to give you a quick layout of the house. When you come in the front door, to the left is a hallway, and the last door on the left is my bedroom. But there's a bathroom at the very end of the hallway. And the way the house was laid out is such that whenever the bathroom door is open, the mirror reflects back down the hall toward you. Things only happened after the sun went down. Ever since I was young, I would always wake up in the middle of the night either thirsty or hungry, so I would go to the kitchen to make a snack. While walking back to my room down the hall, I would always feel something right behind me, reaching, trying to grab a hold of me, which of course forced me to speed walk or light sprint back to my room, where I would sit quietly trying to calm my heart. Whenever the bathroom door is open though, and you could see your reflection in the hall, I never felt like I was being followed. But I would see shadows running around behind me or peeking their heads out around the corner like they didn't want to be seen. Shortly after we moved in, we got a dog. Since then, we always had dogs in the house. We've had three in total, and most of the time, if I was ever home alone, they would come and hang out with me. And every dog, even to this day, will occasionally just stare at my bedroom door that leads to the hall, or even snarl at it. Fast forward a few years to 17 to 18 year old me. I'm working a part-time retail job where I keep the keys to the store. On some occasions, I had the mornings off and someone would need the keys to open so I left them in the mailbox outside my front door just so I wouldn't have to wake up early. 
It happened on two occasions where my coworker John would come to get the keys in the morning, and as he was getting back in the car, he would see somebody staring at him through my dad's bedroom window, which was the room next to mine. John stared at him for a few minutes and waved a little, but the figure didn't move or react. He would just look down to start his car, look back up, and the figure would be totally gone. He described the figure as a wrinkled old man with a bald head. Nobody in my family has ever matched that description, and at the time, my entire family had left for work, and I was still sound asleep in bed. I'm also not an old man. John had refused to ever go back to get the keys again after that. I don't know how many entities I have in my home, and though I have an uneasiness and nervous feeling, I never felt outright threatened, until one day. I was 22 at the time, I was just in the basement getting laundry on a normal day. Nothing was off, nothing felt weird, it was 100% normal. I was finished folding all my clothes, so I went to carry them upstairs to my bedroom. And as I was climbing the stairs, I heard loud stomping coming from behind me, down the hallway where the laundry room was. Then they sped up, as if somebody was running full sprint toward me. I spun around, and I saw this black figure round the corner and barrel up the stairs. It made it to within an inch of my face, and then disappeared. I almost shat myself. I've never felt such anger and malice in my whole life. I ran to my bedroom, slammed the door, and just sat there in silence, listening for any bit of movement at all. But it was completely still. Those are the experiences that I've had so far. I can only guess what might come next, but I think it's safe to say I definitely live in a haunted house. About 10 years ago, my mom, two sisters, and I, and another small family that we were friends with, took a short trip to Northumberland. It's not too far from Alnwick Castle, where the first and second Harry Potter films were shot. My dad, and the father of the other family, had to work, so it was just our two moms and us seven children, aged between 5 and 15 years old. Because the other family was quite wealthy, and we were not, they paid for the accommodation, which turned out to be an old country house built in the late 1700s, Newton Hall. It has since been stylishly refurbished into a wedding venue, but was then an eerie and isolated shadow of its 19th century preoccupants. I remember us all being shuffled through dark wood-paneled passages into a large staircase lined with old portraits. We joked about it being like Hogwarts, the portraits as grim inhabitants with their eyes alive and moving, following us as we climbed the stairs. What was first a joke soon became a genuine concern in the following couple of days. As a side note, I'm still amazed at how we had the whole place to ourselves, me being young then and not fully appreciating what the cost must have been to rent it out. My mom still claims it was because there were no more holiday rentals available in the area during summer implying that this grand hall was a sort of last resort, but I don't think so. Anyway, in addition to the creepy paintings, there was a huge Native American-style totem pole with its garish peeling paint and beady eyes glaring from multiple heads. This stood watch on the landing of the second floor. In a so-called playroom were various animal heads mounted on the walls and in the tall corridors on the ground floor were benches, their legs fashioned from a brutal mesh of deer antlers. It was the benches that were the first cause for alarm. On the first morning, upon waking up, we noticed that one or two of these benches had moved a few inches from their proper placement at the wall's edge. However, this strange but subtle event was not given any thought, at least until the next morning when it happened again. I remember distinctly that the blame was put to the eldest of the seven children, Michael, 
who had a sort of mischievous manner about him, but he denied it. This physical disturbance in the already extremely scary house was enough to make us sleep in pairs. I remember that my older sister and I were taking turns sleeping on the side of the bed that faced the wall, rather than be exposed to anything that might come in the night. Only one other thing happened that seemed poignant enough for me to remember now. Three of the girls developed some kind of rash while we stayed at the hall. The doctor diagnosed it as empedigo, an infectious skin rash which explains the coincidence. However, the cause still remains completely ambiguous and was never discovered. I don't know if it was a natural infection or something more sinister. Either way, the home was the scene of one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced, before or since, and I genuinely hope to not experience anything like that again. In Thessaloniki, Greece, several people consider a certain house to be very haunted. The house was said to have been the mansion of its previous owner, and today it has not been inhabited since it's dilapidated and the surrounding area has been transformed into a warehouse for building materials. It's rumored that those who have stayed there at night have heard terrible noises from ghosts roaming in the rooms, making them flee in terror. It is also said that the previous owner's building is accompanied by a curse that he put on it, and that anyone who lives there is in danger of going mad, and anyone who tries to demolish it is in danger of dying. In the past, two contractors decided to demolish it, but on the day of the planned demolition, they suddenly died. One died from a heart attack, and the other was killed in a traffic accident in Athens. I don't have any personal experience with this house, but I don't think I want any. When I was a little girl of about 10 or so, I would always go shopping with my aunt for my birthday. but. This particular time was a little different. She wanted me to stay the night and then go shopping the next day. I agreed to do this because who doesn't love going shopping with your aunt as a kid? I was always creeped out by her house for the longest time before I stayed that night. My dad and brother have had experiences before me. They always camped out in the backyard in the woods. She had a big place, a house, a barn, a pool, even a pond, and lots of land. Sounds perfect, right? Anyway, they said that they saw a fog surrounding the house. Not the barn or anything else, but just the house. Creepy. And they also heard things in the woods, too. Yes, I am thinking what you're thinking, it was most likely animals. The fog was harder to explain. Either way, I figured that they were just trying to scare me so I didn't think too much of it when the opportunity to stay there at night came up. Let's get on to that experience. I was up in the bedroom, right at the top of the stairs. If you walked straight up the stairs, you could walk straight into the bedroom. The catch to the bedroom is that it had a baby gate on it, so it was very hard to get in and out quickly. There was a home office to the left of the stairs, and then to the right, there was like another living room area, with an old-time bedroom connected to it with dolls and glass tea sets. Oddly enough, that's the room that I felt the safest in. Off of the living room area was a long hallway that led to my aunt and uncle's room. I was laying in bed watching my favorite movie, Mary Poppins. It was at least 9pm at night. Bedtime for a child like me, right? I fell asleep during the movie. I woke up with the TV off and to a room that was completely pitch black. The door was open and I could barely see the staircase leading down. I tried to close my eyes so that I wouldn't be so scared, but what happened next, I can never forget. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs 
and they weren't heavy, so I knew that they weren't my aunt or uncle. In fact, it sounded like a child walking up the steps. I hid under the covers and hoped that it would go away. The footsteps came all the way up the stairs, across the room, and stood right next to my bed. I tried very hard to be still and quiet. Finally, the entity turned away and I heard the little steps go back down the stairs. I was really relieved until I heard them ascend the staircase once more. I was so scared I wanted to scream for my aunt, but she was so far away she wouldn't have been able to hear me anyway. It came back into the room again. As I hid under the covers for the second time, it came and stopped by the other side of the bed, closest to me. I felt it tug on my blanket, and then it turned away and walked back down the stairs. So this time I got smart, or stupid. I don't know, you can decide that for yourself. Once I heard that it was far enough away, I jumped out of bed. I opened the baby gate, and I ran all the way to my aunt and uncle's room and crawled into bed with them. Let me tell you, I scared the crap out of them. Once they finally made room for me, I got all cozy, but I couldn't sleep. Anyway, it was about a minute after I got into bed with them that I heard the baby gate slam. I was so terrified, but at least I was with my aunt and uncle. The next morning, I woke up in their bed alone upstairs. Now, you might not believe this, but I don't really care if you do or not, but I woke up to three scratches on my chest, and they were very painful. To this day, nobody really believes me that it happened, besides my best friend. This event still haunts me. I don't really talk to people about it because nobody ever believes me and I don't want to get ridiculed, but I just had to vent. Whatever it was, I still don't know. A demon posing as a child? Probably. Something evil? That's for sure. But I guess I'll never really know. I grew up in a haunted house. I have so many stories. But this one was on my mind today. Sidebar. Most of the encounters revolve around my brothers. I believe that my middle brother has abilities, and I believe that my youngest brother, who is also autistic, is a medium. I'm a little sensitive, but nothing like them. One particular evening, my teenaged brother and two of his buddies were hanging out at my parents' house and nobody was there but them. My brother got a phone call from a girl, so he went upstairs to his room, leaving the two friends downstairs. When he came back down about 15 minutes later, he found the house completely quiet and totally dark. The TV had been turned off and the lights as well. He said that the only light was the last little bit of dwindling daylight trickling through the windows and the glass on the front door. He started laughing and calling for his friends, thinking that they were hiding from him and playing a joke. He walked through the downstairs room by room, but couldn't find them. He started feeling really nervous, so he began trying to call his friends, but they weren't answering, and he couldn't hear their phones ringing from where he was. He went and checked upstairs to see if maybe they'd snuck past him and were hiding, but they were nowhere. By now, he said the entire vibe of the whole house had changed. He was feeling very anxious. He ran down the stairs and exited the front door directly across from the steps on the front porch, leaving the front door slightly open. As soon as he stepped outside, the front door slammed, and something from the inside of the house started banging on the door with great force and intensity. It really scared him, and he was also getting irritated, so he opened the door to confront his friends. He was laughing, saying, Oh, ha ha, okay, y'all got me. But inside, the house was silent and still. It was at that point that he heard a car door shut in the cul-de-sac, and he turned around only to see his friends arriving at the house. They told him that they had left when he took that phone call and ran to the gas station. 
they swore on their lives that they knew nothing about the door. 